Hey guys, it is episode 149 of Four Player Anime Cast, the 25th of July, 2020, 10 p.m. or to be exact, 10 10 p.m. Eastern Time on the United States. And I am Spire here with you on a lovely summer evening. Surprisingly, not as humid and sweaty as I would have expected coming this far into July. Peen. <laughs> yes. And as expected, here are my trustworthy compatriots who can also actually <laughs> speak and write proper English. <laughs> Do English good. Dark. Uh, hey, how you doing? Uh, near? Uh, hi. And toast. You know who the two top two most prevalent pick picks that are posted in our hollow live are? Can we not talk about fucking you, hollow? You right? know who they are? What who is it? You can get guess. Is it Coco is something related to Coco, something related to Corone? <laughs> no. How, how could you be more wrong? <laughs> do, 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 you, do you even watch VTubers Fire? Our, it's I apologize. Fucking, it's probably like our shit, whatever, right? The, literally the one you had on screen. No, I wish. She, she's, she's, a, she's a mod there. You, you can't post pics of her. She'll get mad. Uh, the, the real answer is Pekara and Marin. Yeah, I'm not too surprised uh, by those choices either. Uh, what do you mean? But, what do you mean? Because they're popular and there are memes about them. <laughs> like, I'm not, I, I'm not, Famous. I'm not like, wow, those brand motherfuckers are nobodies. I'm just like, Marine? okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> Jesus, I, don't, <laughs> I don't like these. But anyways, um, so we are doing a, another roundhouse, or... I almost said roundhouse kick. I mean, you round did table. that last time too, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, we are doing another round table. And this will be our, presumably, hopefully, our last round table for the summer season before, you know, next episode. Are so you sure, we'll... Spire? Because I, I, I got I get, that. I don't know, man. I, I, well, I got topics for two because, more. Because again, like, I. I'm not saying. I mean, we can I, still I, do roundtables. Yeah, I, I love doing these roundtables. Oh, love... the, eventually, we yeah. do have to cover the current season that is happening. Yes. Nah, <laughs> no, we don't. I, I no, love... but I'm saying <laughs> no, I don't, don't think this is going to be the last one for this. Yeah, season, no, no, for though. sure, or or for next season, even uh, for quite a while. But Unless I, you I do... plan on covering gay titans, but <laughs> yeah. Dude, the, the the what? Yeah, the 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 titans bride. Yeah, or whatever the Ed Prague one. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't I think if we by... have more Wasn't than that... like two episodes, you're breaking into that territory. Wait, 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 so... wait, wait. We definitely, we definitely talked about the studio for behind that, right? It's the same studio behind um, the firefighter, yeah, the, gay the gay firefighter. firefighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one was Hell so good. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I do love doing these deep dives with Toast, with Nier, with Dark, and with all the viewers of the stream, of course. But Spire, weren't you covering yeah. it? Because I wasn't. Uh, I probably will take the bullet. Yeah, I mean, yikes, why the hell not? Dude. <laughs> Big yikes! But uh, we do have to actually review anime on our anime podcast someday, so we'll be getting those, uh, getting right to it. And after that, we'll probably have to see again because of the global circumstances. It's not like anime is getting churned out at the same rate as before. So we'll kind of have to see and kind of gauge what's happening and maybe have some more roundtables. Four player roundtable cast. Near, yeah. near, what's that new Canadian anime that came out recently? What? Canadian anime? I don't know. You you would know, right? The last one is apparently Code Lyoko that I saw. What's the new one that's coming Lyoko? out? I don't think Code Lyoko was Canadian. It was just French. I think it was right? French. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't I think mean, it was I'm... French Canadian. I don't. I don't know, dude. I don't know the fucking code Lyoko lore. Sorry, but I don't know. Oh, yeah. Why, why, why Anyways, don't you I'll hear? Only Google it. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. We are in another round table discussion, and this time, 
we we had a couple of ideas obviously before they were all major ideas stuff like isekai survival games so on we have the same sort of bigger idea but this time we chose a very 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 low hanging fruit and that is no we didn't subject. you want low hanging pretty low hanging fruit. if you want low hanging fruit you go with my suggestion i'm still waiting <laughs> that's that's not even that's literally just going from a baseball game to Chuck E. cheeses you know what i mean, I mean that's <laughs> like the hell. level of like stuff <laughs> <is>. sophistry <laughs> The level of sophistry is uh, is a little bit uh, different, but um, we are covering the topic of harems in anime, and if you haven't been on living under a rock for the past I don't know five hundred years, you probably know what I'm talking about. Harems by harems, I mean having multiple girls sort of chase after the same guy, or vice versa, right? Uh, multiple guys chase after the uh, one girl. Uh, the one guy or girl is presumptive main character duh else the story would probably not go <laughs> great places uh and the uh, one of the backbones of the anime or the manga or whatever story ends up becoming hey which girl is he going to choose or is he going to choose any girl or he's going to go out with all of them or what's going to happen with the girls what's going to happen with the guy blah 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 the, the romance comedy sort of kicked up to kicked up a couple of notches you know who I, <laughs> you know who I, I, I want, I want to see the childhood friend win. Have you ever seen a childhood friend win in an anime? I have. Yes, I, I have. Yeah, once or twice. Uh, but was, well, no, was more she, than once or twice? But I but need but, to but, but, but we but remember, was she introduced first or last? No, you no. Know, these are all good, good questions. We can we can keep, talk, keep talking about this. Uh, but I do want to kind of actually format. You know some questions so we don't go down the rabbit hole too much so i guess first off again the eternal question the class question that we always have is uh what in when you see something an anime or some sort of romance development or whatever what slash when do you consider it a harem and you can even take this outside of anime and manga you can sort of gauge it by community what the community thinks stuff like that so let's start with Nier. So when you say when I say okay harem stuff, what in, in anime obviously, what what are you thinking about? Uh, um, inside anime, outside anime, whatever. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know many harem series outside of anime. But um, no, 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 no. I meant I meant like community response or like community kind uh, of. Oh, every Mormon. <laughs> yeah, all the Mormons. Yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> yeah. Um, the community response. I don't know. I mean, because because there's I, th I think the reason why I keep bringing up like the community in terms of all of this is because I think obviously there's a literary level, duh, in terms of what we're talking about. But I also think that a lot of these concepts have kind of grown outside of just talking about them on a literary level. And it's become a little bit more abstract, a little bit more meta where we're kind of gauging how the ecosystem, how the culture, how the community kind of responds to it. Because what, in my opinion, also ends up happening is obviously we we kind of become biased uh, by those responses. But also, as time goes on, future authors and writers and even current writers, right, kind of become attuned to those community responses and those cultural sort of understandings, acceptances of what this idea is. You know what I mean? Like with Isekai uh, and like, you know, sort of like this get hit by the truck, you know, go into elf land kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So so that's sort of what I'm talking about when I'm talking about, like, community. So what are you asking me? So, so when I say stuff like harem or anime or, you know, just harem stuff, right, uh, with regards to anime, what, what, what are your definitions for it? And then kind of, like, what does it make you think about in general? Um... I mean, for me, like my my definition um, for harem was probably it's probably just like uh, I mean, because I feel like harem doesn't necessarily need romance, but like ninety nine percent of the time, it does have some sort of romance undertones, right? Um, but usually, just a series where obviously you have the main character, and then you have uh, for me more than two. Uh, like either you know uh, romantic interests or characters that are like 
legitimately like fawning over the main character, right? Like, uh, right. you know, uh, I think I think we were talking about this um, earlier, but you know how like say uh, Baki Monogatari, right? Uh, the main character Aradagi, he's like he's dating one of mm-hmm. the characters, right? Like it right. sets that up pretty much instantly. Mm-hmm. Um, but all the other girls still fawn over him, right? Well, it, and, it's a definitely necessary condition. Is it sufficient though? Like we uh, again, this is also part of the back in the Katari discussion we were talking about, which is if the MC is just like, all right, get the hell out of my way, <laughs> then does it become? Does it still maintain its position as a hair? Um, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, dark. You can, you can, you can come in. I was gonna say, I would, I would say, yeah, just because it's like. You know, it's fair. Like, it's, uh, to me, I look at it mm-hmm. more as not really from the MC's perspective in that sense, more of like the viewer's perspective. Like, what you're yeah, okay. essentially okay. trying to get out of the show in that sense, like what you're trying to watch. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, you're not. <laughs> like, it, you, you want to know. watch the you want to watch the main character for... kind of fall in the figurative ball pit. Is is how I describe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it's like, I mean, for like Monogatari, it's like, <laughs> for a lot of people, like, it, are you really only watching, like, if that wasn't the case, right, if he did, mm-hmm. if you only had, like, if you didn't have any other female characters in the show, mm-hmm. or just like female characters that were really engaging, just kite, semi-romantically just with kite. the MC. Hog, like, dude, I'd watch that. <laughs> <laughs> but But that's what I mean, it's like, you wouldn't. Like, I feel like, you know, like, someone who's looking for, like, someone would be looking for a harem and watch Monogatari. Like, someone obviously looking for a harem wouldn't watch Monogatari if it was set up in that sense. In the okay, sense yeah. That I've, yeah, right? yeah, sure. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, if you're looking for a straight harem series, then no. But I would still classify Monogatari as, like, a harem series. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, yes, I think I, mean, I feel like I feel you. like someone who's yeah, I feel like someone who's like, a oh, I want a harem. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah, typically when people like say someone would be like, Okay, like this like, is technically one. <laughs> yeah. Typically when people like say, you know, like recommend me a harem series, right? Mm-hmm. They're looking for something like fucking... Wait, 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 can I can I can I just interrupt? People recommend you a harem series? No, like people ask okay. I was just, for I was just harem asking recommendation. Something. I was like, who who knows you and would recommend your harems? Uh, nobody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Near, near, like... near, you want some harems? I got you. I got you covered. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> sure. But yeah. Typically, there, if you... somebody if somebody comes into like you know a Discord and they're like, "What are some good harem series?" Okay. Yeah, uh, tell, you know, first, you tell them get the fuck out. Yeah. First, exactly. you tell them that they have like terrible taste. Um, and you also tell everybody giving recommendations that they have terrible taste. But you know. <laughs> People will typically say shit like what Infinite Stratos, um, recently Val Love. Uh, yeah, there's uh, you know if you go back, you like Onigai Teacher. Um, yeah. Gotobun is definitely a harem. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. But uh, Diddy Alive, right? Like, yeah. you know, typically uh, more or less slice of life, uh, like rom com series with lots of girls, right? I mean, right. those are the standard notes that a harem series will hit. So, since when did most when since when did harem become synonymous with romantic comedy? Because most harem I mean, series are romantic really... comedy. Because you're you're surrounding the main character with the opposite sex. Yeah, like, I, I think. How, I think yeah, and, it, and if you have like drama, like first of all, it's going to be extremely hard to write like. A drama it becomes where there's an Agatha like Christie. eight it becomes, female characters. It becomes an Agatha like, Christie novel in the, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, well, because it's like, what, like the fuck, what situations could you possibly put these people? <laughs> you, you do it. You do it in arcs. Uh, yeah. So, so the thing is, there, there's natural sort of integration with the romantic comedy and, um, and the harems because. And we'll we'll get more at this later, but in my opinion, obviously, a lot of it's character juggling, right? So an easy way to juggle characters without losing 
too much interest and losing the sense of like, oh, where is this going? Is to kind of run this continual uh, romantic comedy shtick, right? Because if you ran a much more, as uh, Dark says, some sort of drama mm, shenanigans or much more background introspection, retrospection, what have you, then you need to invest much more time per person into each of these things. And you need to be able to juggle those perspectives, those splitting perspectives at the same time as real life, real time events in the story. So you have to juggle 50 billion balls at once. And they all have to be done at some level of depth to where I can say, okay, this drama is actually engaging to me. Right? Yeah, um, I mean, so, it's, yeah. <laughs> It's uh, easier to do comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's e- much easier. Especially said when you that. have like a dozen characters. Yeah. <laughs> you hit, like you know. I mean, yeah, you're not pretty really specific developing like archetypes. You're, so. Yeah, you're just whacking them over the head with the with yeah, the like you don't thing. need you don't need like a huge amount of development because <laughs> it's like all right, here's like like Thomas Robert, like here's the childhood friend. It's like oh, what's oh, that and, character and, like? Yeah. You already know. Yeah, and and I also uh, a variant on what we're just talking about in terms of we don't need much development is that there's a good point to not needing much development for the author, right? In a sense, because at some point, people feel like, hey, this character should be having development. Like, they're going through all of these events, right? So they should have some sort of development, I think, but they don't. So then it, fe- there's, it feels as if there's something missing. But with romantic comedy, in doesn't really have to the development becomes much less necessary because what's the next thing after this gag oh maybe another gag you know, maybe another gag after that and they kind of keep cycling this much sort of uh repeated episodic nature of this instead of going to the next step which is again something that we've both griped about and we've pointed out many 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 times across all sorts of uh, anime and manga right so that's that's i think a, another sort of natural benefit that comes with integrating romantic comedy and uh, harem. But anyways. What um, was it that in, what was it that started this transpire? Well let, let, let's 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 finish up this question first because we went in from a tangent to another tangent to another tangent before we even finished with Nier. So you know do you have any last words on like what do you think a harem sort of entails for you? Um I mean for me I think I said it fairly succinctly like mm-hmm. I guess my definition of like a harem series is a little bit more broad than like uh what people usually look for like uh-huh. when they no, say sure. I want a harem series like the problem know. is when people when most people uh say come into a discord and I I I know I'm already sort of jumping the gun here but um when they come into a discord and they say I'm looking for a harem series you know what the next series of sort of conversation pieces i'm most afraid of after they ask that question or they ask uh they uh state that request is somebody saying okay well what did you watch before and then they list like three or four really shitty series and then i'm just like oh my god just is this is this what we have to deal with you know you know what i mean right yeah i mean people are always like oh i i love Infinite Strata. I love Nisekoi. Recommend me something like that. And it's like, dude. Oh, there was somebody who was like, I love... Hey, um... to this day, Laura Bodwig is the only character from Infinite Strata so I even have <laughs> any idea. Yeah. And I'm pretty happy with that. You, you know, uh, a while back, there was this weird like, uh, duo twin, twin Star Exorcist, right? Twin Star Exorcist, right? God. Somebody was like, oh, I watched Twin Star Exorcist. Did that turn Exorcist. into a harem? I th- I don't even know, but it wasn't good either. It was like hot flaming trash. Yeah, um, but like, I mean like fucking bad taste congregates, dude. Yeah, no, yeah. No, no, I, yeah. I, well, I guess, yeah that's so what I'm saying it, it was just the general just bad taste stuff. So when I so when somebody asked, "Hey, what what series have you watched before?" They went, "Oh, I watched a lot of series, but one I've really liked recently and that's kind of along my taste is Twin Star Exorcist, and, uh, <laughs> and I think say, they also. Oh, okay. So you lied about the whole I've watched more than <laughs> Twin Star Exorcist. Yeah, and then, and then I think later they they either listed um, 
Rakuten Kishi or they list. Why? Yeah, no, they Rakuten list Kishi Rakuten. is not a hero. Don't start, dude. <laughs> it is not a hero. Don't talk to me. There's only one girl and the only one that counts. <laughs> Don't talk to me. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I guess thank you, Nier, for your uh, uh, explanation. I think the one you're thinking of is uh, Asterisk War. Not Both Rakuten of them Kishi. are like... <laughs> No, you're thinking of Asterisk Every War. Every goddamn time. I'm literally about to bang my head against this microphone, and the only thing that's stopping from Is there a timeline the... where Toast, like, hears the words Rakudai Kishi and doesn't bring up Asterisk War? <laughs> no, because it came out in the same season. Pretty sure, right? <laughs> just like, I feel like they did. The moment, the moment, like, like anything you say, like, the you duel can, must be complete. <laughs> the, the duality of me, it. yeah, you... it's the one constant in every timeline. <laughs> the duality of man, right here. The Astro Swar versus the Rocket and yeah. of life. <laughs> like bring up Rocket it's, I mean, it's not even Rocket a contest. Pretty bad. Rocket. I think you're talking about Astro. Yeah, Astro Swar is way worse than Rocket oh, oh, and <laughs> They both suck, dude. Dark. One, well, Dark. one is significantly better than the other. Dark, save us. All right, what, what do you think about harems? Oh, sort of um, encompassing. <laughs> what's your harem. favorite harem, Dark? <laughs> Uh, what's my favorite? I mean, if we have to go, like, if I had to choose, it would be... Is it Railgun? Doesn't that count as a harem? Because Tomo's... I mean, it does. Yeah, it does, but he doesn't like the harem part of it as much. Why not? Like, part of it, like, a lot of the harem kind of aspect falls away with with Index and New Testament, right? So The harem part? If, if, if If we're counting harem tropes, does I mean, that the problem mean with, the index problem with would index win? is that index is almost like um I guess uh I guess it would kind of almost be like Monogatari in the sense that like but I guess it like in index it doesn't even have the main like girl, right? Like I mean index isn't it, even it like had it in like the early part of interest, like it had it in like the early part of like new it's very weird because it happened it it happened in the very early part the sort of first quarter of old testament right or the original whatever right books and wait then, a minute and then and it just like goes away yeah she <laughs> she literally just goes away and i feel like the author had multiple reasons where it's like one reason was that there were a lot of things other things going on so he had to juggle them of course and the second thing was that he kind of noticed, it's like, hey, uh, this series is becoming really famous, but then this guy is, like, going out with <laughs> this random, like, elementary school girl, right? Yeah, so, it's like, Index is a lolly, so can I... I don't know if I can pull this off. And yeah. all I can really say about that is be brave, you know? No. Um, you mean, like, uh, be brave, <laughs> be brave like Ori no Emoto was brave? Yeah, be brave. Grow a fucking pair, pal. All right. Nah, yeah. but um, I mean, I that was the same for Oreimo. Like that was the same for Oreimo. I think. Yeah, Oreimo. I, um, right? I, I mean, I just think I think Index is also worse off for dropping that to begin with because I think or yeah, fucking, like scatterbrained series like mainline because of that, right? Yeah. He's like any scene where Index is in it now, it's just kind of like. Oh, this person exists. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, not, it's like she's still like pretty important in the story, but it's like, so we're just going to ignore the fact that for the first like two seasons, there were pretty heavy romantic undertones, but okay, that, that's fine. <laughs> like, sure. I guess we're just going to drop that. Um, but I would say, I, I mean, I would say that's probably my preferable like preference in that sense, um, or to have like the main like girl. Um, even something like, uh, I would consider even like Kokoro Connect, I guess, to be a harem in a lot of ways because you have the two main. Then you also do have the third girl too, who he gets involved with. Well, well, the third girl doesn't. Granted, he turn. Yeah, but yeah. he hands that over essentially to the other guy, but she's very <laughs> clearly interested in it. Like yeah. he just essentially goes, "Yeah, no, like I can't know, have my three homie girls. likes you, like." <laughs> He's like an orange hair. Like, what the heck is that? Yeah. But like, I would still consider that to be 
have a pretty strong harem element in that sense because he does run the gambit with all three girls and then he winds up you know becoming romantically involved with two of them at different points in the story so it's like I think three at that point is more than enough to say like that is a harem element it's not a harem series though that's the thing it's like I really don't like a straight harem series like in finished straight us or something like that the only it's one not, ever though, it's really got cool mecha action we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna go into we're gonna yeah go but i mean it. in the sense that like every character is running a gambit and there's like fucking 12 right <laughs> like monster musume has been to date like the only like real strong like harem series i've watched that have been like yeah that was enjoyable because there's always like the monster bit to distract yeah because it's like the monster bit that's there to begin with and the mc's interactions are so like completely inconsequential in yes. every way shape yes. or form yes <laughs> it, so he, he's kind of being like drug uh run around and i think i think the bigger thing with also with monster Miss man we will get to talk about this a little bit more later is that it's mainly the monster girls who are all spending time talking to each other and kind of developing their personalities and developing their relationships and much less it's much less the guy talking to the girls it's the girls all talking to each other you know what i mean yeah like he he, and them all interacting so it's it's a lot less there's not a lot lot like the mc like he's the most insert a character could get before just not being yeah 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 and i would heavily prefer that over something like say like fucking kirito or something right <laughs> where it's uh, like yeah you have like the harem but also you, it's like the main character is very much like a character that's present and doing shit all the time and extremely important actually more important than any of them. so um yeah so Going off that point, I guess I'll just kind of talk a little bit about what I consider is a harem. Yeah, so Pyro is actually brought up a point just in time in uh, chat. And so does Session. It's actually very, they're very good points that I do want to discuss. And in addition to the whole like girls and they have to be infatuated with boys and the boys can be um, infatuated. Obviously, the dudes have to invest time into them, right? Uh, I think a bigger, I think one of the sufficiency requirements of a harem series, not nece- not not necessities. Obviously, there being girls is a necessity to a harem, but it's not sufficient, right? Um, but is the idea is that um the the guy has to put in sufficient sort of investment or interest in the girls right because if the sidekick girl comes along and it's like oh i'm in love with the mc and the mc's just like get the hell out of my way ho or like the he it, she becomes the sidekick just becomes a comedic foil or something like that right then it doesn't matter um if if there's such a strong streak of the main girl doing things all the time then it doesn't matter but if there's like actual arcs and entire sort of side stories and chapters and an involvement with the between the main character and the side girl then i believe it it can qualify as there well now, yeah i mean think of i yeah. think of in that sense like chunibyu would be a pretty decent example as well right like there right, are right, right, what right. three or four girls that end up in that show at some right, point and it's like right 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 right, right. all I think, of them I, just become like supporting characters yeah and and also it becomes very like it, it becomes very side character ish. The the other char- the other girls. There's no the main character isn't just you know having flings with Dekamori or um, Nibutani or whoever comes right. It's it's he's pretty much on one track, right? So that's yeah, that's. I mean, the they're big pretty thing. much all wingmen at that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's a big thing for me. And uh, going back to what uh, part of Dios and Sasan pointed out in chat. Is that for instance the first thing from Pirate of the Oz, He said, uh, he said he he initially thought that uh, <laughs> is literally a lesbian. Yeah, uh, Awagami SS is he thought it could be a harem. And what what I said was that 
in the actual sort of universe of Amagami SS, in terms of how the stories fold out, each of in each of the girls' routes, you're not the girls aren't fighting, right? So I think another sort of sufficiency requirement for a harem is that they need to actually be aware of each other and in conflict, right? It has to be a an actual sort of competition in a sense, right? Because that's the whole point of the multiple girls being in the same space, being in the same timeline, sort of having that sort of tension, right? Will they, won't they? It's the harem is the love triangle drama, will they, won't they, who's going to win, blah, 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 all that shit on steroids and geared towards boys instead of girls, right? Because the girl, you know, with the shoujo series, you had like the love triangle and stuff like that. But now with the boys, you just have all the girls throwing themselves at the main guy, blah, 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 all that crap, right? So I don't think, so Amagami SS, um, Amagami, I guess, the original game, though it's pretty much a straight up dating sim in terms of like, you choose one girl and then you go on that route and nowhere in the route do you contact the other girls or do really anything. So it's pretty much a straight up um, series, uh, romance series and not, I think, a harem. Uh, Clonod is a little bit of an interesting case. Um, and I can empathize with both what uh, with Tuato said as well, where he says, you know, if if you're going to say what you said about Amagami, then Clanad Klan isn't harem. So, um, are we going to go by the game or the anime rules for Clanad? Yeah, so that's actually what I was going to say. I think in the, I think in the anime, because they emphasize sort of what's happening in the common route, and then. It it kind of says, okay, well, fuck you guys. Nagisa is gonna win, right? So I think I think in that sense, the anime is a introduces a sort of rogue harem aspect, but in the game, I would say definitely there is a lot more. Um, there's a lot less of the harem aspect. I think there's still some sort of conflicts. For instance, like sometimes like Kyo uh, Fujibayashi Kyo gets a little bit jealous of um, uh, Tomoyo, right? The the silver haired girl, right? And then there's like a little back and forth, but then uh, in the game, for the most part, you just go one round and then that's it, right? For instance, in the Fujibayashi uh, twins route, right? You just once you get onto their right, you just eat fucking lunches with them for 500 days. <laughs> that is literally the route. If you guys don't believe me, try try the game. That's actually the route. And same with the other girls. You kind of just become wrapped in the route. So I think in the game, it's not really a harem. Yes, so uh, so Session says the game ultimately gets alternate world spinoffs for the other girls. So Tomoyo, the silver hair girl, did get a spinoff. The other girls obviously get their own like endings in the actual game. But the only people who got like major sort of endings is obviously Nagisa with the original game, Kana, then After Story, right? And Tomoyo again, uh, there's a specific spinoff game called Tomoyo After. However, for the other girls, there is no um, ender thing. Well, you got uh, yeah. the you got the Kyo OVA. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's again that's that's essentially the ending in the game, but in OVA format. So no, no, no. Uh, they didn't get a spin off of their own. But um, is yeah. Fate a, a harem series? No, oh, it falls under literally that. <laughs> I mean, what? if you were gonna call like no, if you were no. gonna say like Fate or like Amagami is a harem, then it's like. Literally, no, I think because fate within the same novels. timeline, within the same timeline, you can there are like spats of jealousy and stuff like that, right? That was In what I fate? No, yeah, yeah. Particularly. Uh, like, not really. Um, granted, fate, I never played it, but as far as the shows go, it's... for the for fate's visual novel routes, um, like, uh, I, I, I guess the only one that gets like. Could you could sort of say it's like quote unquote jealous would be um, Rin, but for like for the fate route and for heaven's feel, like right. the thing is, um, for fate's routes, like the main well, girl so is focused, really right? like there's focus. Yeah, they're yeah, the only one that shows up, 
right? Right, yeah, that's like thing. Shiro's really only spending time with Saber. They know of the other Saber girls, crowd. but there's like, people who show up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it's, Rin, it's a very old time. It's a old Rin time. shows up and she's yeah. like, you know, here's exposition because it's, uh, it's a very, it's a very like old, old, uh, old school visual novel. You know what I mean? Because yeah. old school visual novels are all like that, where they kind of all focus the story on this girl you're going out with this girl okay you're doing the routes on this girl yeah. whereas a lot of the newer ones i guess that's part of why it might have become confused is yeah, like I mean, you kind like, of see the cover on one <laughs> that's true she is impure but uh in in the no, newer you. ones you have yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh you have you have all of these uh you, you have a lot more common route going on and even in the actual like route of the girl you have the other girls kind of jumping in. <laughs> yeah, a lot of yeah. newer visual novels yeah, will yeah, like yeah, yeah, introduce no. the entire cast as well before yeah, like yeah, exactly. giving you, you know, the decision. Right. Or even within the route, it's it's just somebody else will just pop up and either be a wingman or be some sort of obstacle or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I get you. Yeah, it's called lazy game development. It's called the illusion of choice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, so I think I think these are uh I, I think these are sort of what I think are generally ideas. Again, a big part of my understanding of Harem series is that there has to be this sort of same timeline tension or conflict, right? Again, boiled down to it, Harem series is essentially the love triangle that is that has always existed in you know drama soap operas dramas shoujo manga whatever but put up to 11 spiked up to 11 and made for boys that is literally it and uh, that being said a big part of that is drama right so i i I think that sort of conflict needs to be in there (laughs) chris i being like 15 hours before you go to that's because chris prides itself on having such great central story although wow. the second part the second part of the trilogy isn't actually that interesting and the third part is also actually not that interesting but 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 the endings are good Pog, dude <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to spoil too much of chris Aya, but i do like the part where they're like oh man we're so angry at the boss and then they just run up to the boss and just punch him in the face. And then that's like, that's pretty much it. There's really nothing to the trilogy. <laughs> they set man. up this boss that he, he just, they so just the run up. The Thinking and like, Man oh, series you. is what you're saying. Yeah. Have you ever been like playing a visual novel and like you legitimately only care about like one girl? So you get to the point where you just start like fucking skipping whenever like they're not on and screen. And you have the other characters. Wait, you, did you play Grisaya? No. Uh, yeah. Okay, you should you should play Kersaya. But um, I I also maintain a lot of there's there's some one of the major faults with Kersaya is that the problems are much too big for the characters to handle. Um, but that's again that's a discussion for later. But um, anyways, last but not least, we finally come to wraps on the first question. <laughs> Toast. Uh, what encompasses harem for you? Huh? Oh, first off, we we have what we have to define what is the harem that started the harem genre in the first uh, place. No, we don't. Yeah, no. we do. Would you either? Do yeah, yeah, we do. Cause just because there's conflicting love interests doesn't mean it's a harem, or does it? Well, I mean, it's a numbers game at that point. And also, yeah, if it's a pretty much everything game, else we just said, <laughs> the numbers game is what three people at least, right? Probably uh, for me, it's more yeah, than I two. Mean, yeah, it's like as long as yeah, it's, it's more three, than two, three plus it's three like, or more, three or more. Yeah. So two is just two is just love triangle stuff. Yeah. So uh, uh, let me throw let me throw out something out of my hat, which you consider I don't know. Uh, would you consider Saver Marionette a harem series? I guess. Because it's got at least three girls that are interested in the main protagonist. 
Mm. Maybe you guys don't know Saber Marionette. Let's. What about Vandred? I there we go. Yeah, Vandred. Is that a harem series? Uh, this uh, I I've heard of the series, uh, from like Japanese channels, but yes, I would say um, Saber Marionette is a harem series. Yeah. All right. Really? How come? I don't know, bro. I don't know what either of these series are. Because the girls are freaking... Well, they're not, like, fighting over him, but they're pretty much, like... Just basically just fucking lusting after him. Yeah. Like, that was my point when I brought up, like, on Atari, right? Like, the MC's going out with one of the characters, but you still have the MC, like, hanging out with the rest of, like, the female cast, and they're still, like, fucking thirsting after his god, you know? And, he, and the big thing is, he doesn't, like, really reject them outright until sort of last or a couple of volumes right yeah all right so since, is, since, Nisi, since you got Nisi, Nisi mentions every once in a while oh Araragi is going out with Senjuhara guys remember that <laughs> kind of does this as a sort of way to end a volume you, if that makes sense or end an arc and it's the yeah. same thing it's the same device as in data live right? I mean, they, but data live is much more stupid about it oh well, most you want to talk with... data live hold on one sec let me get no, my I notes don't talk... it's the most apparent with like kan buddy right uh in the back no, it, it, no i think i think it's most apparent with uh hanekawa actually because right yeah, literally yeah, yeah, after yeah. hanekawa you know just they have all of her prequels, you know, her movies. Keys fucking keys of an Atari shit, right? Like the yep. entire thing, everything blows up, and they spent so much time, and she suffered, and, you know, he had to freaking raise some sort of stupid ass vampire, and all this crap, right? And then after all of it, how did she like, like, man, what would have happened if I would have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That was so stupid. I was like, oh my god, are you serious right now? Yeah, but like, even at like the end of um, Kanbari's arc in right. Bakemono, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there's all this setup of like, oh, Kanbari's a lesbian. And, you know, she was actually, she <laughs> but... was actually really into Senju Gahara. But, Araki's really hot. So it's like, He's you know. really good. Yeah. He's really great in bed. <laughs> but yeah, so. <laughs> I think um, it's very, it's very unfortunate that I think this sort of happened in terms of like what the authors do, right? And this sort of message that they're sending in, it kind of again, if I was to mention Data Live, for instance, this happens on a much more regular occasion. And by regular occasion, I mean literally every volume. If you if you guys have read if people out there who are why desperate enough to have read Data Live as I have, um, this guy's I, fucked in the head. Yeah, I literally at the end of every volume and almost at the end of every other episode in the anime, what happens is that the volume itself, each volume itself, sort of covers an arc of a, a, a character's arc, right, or a character's story in that instance, right. Um. So they'll cover somebody's arc, right? Some some non toka character's arc in the volume. And then in the last chapter of the volume, Toka comes running up to uh, Shido and she's like, oh man, did you forget? We were supposed to go on a shopping date together or whatever. And Shido's like, oh darn, I forgot about <laughs> I forgot about you. Let's go out on this date. And then that's literally the end. The author is just bashing just bashing the audience over their head saying hey you idiot stupid Sorry, motherfuckers do you give so much fucking pussy i forgot yeah <laughs> you're like do you... the author is just like bashing everybody over the head and being like do you stupid motherfuckers realize that actually the best girl is toka <laughs> and it's just like mm, i mean the author sure is to... yeah i mean the author is correct in that regard also are you sure you're you're a big fat liar, Spire? That's not how each volume ends. That is absolutely how it, it's each funny. volume ends. Is Toka comes in and she's That's like, how every episode ends, dude. Each each volume, Toka comes in and is like, ah, Shido, you kissed that girl. Remember, you have yeah, to kiss yeah, me I, too. I, I you liar. I apologize. I apologize. You, yeah. you, you liar. Like, they're, 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 I apologize for getting. Did that you really read them, yes. Spire? I, I did. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't doubt that you read that toast. <laughs> but, see, see, uh, hold on, what, is it is it the twenty sixth yet? No, uh, the no. twenty sixth. Data live spirit pred pledge. Hell yeah. Uh, so toast. Do you want to talk? Do you want All to right. So talk? so if we're gonna go by the very first harem, as uh, recorded in in biblical lore, in I guess. <laughs> Or in, uh, I guess, mo modern historians, I guess we'll call it, would in have, Babylonian tomes, would have yes. to be invented by Rumiko Takahashi. Okay. Fa famous for her works, you know. Y you know. You would say Yatsura? Yeah, that, that's, that, yes. that would be the first hair. <laughs> would it inspire? No, 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 I wouldn't, I would say no. Really? Yeah, because it's yeah. only um, Lum and Shinobu. I mean, there, there's like other female characters there, but it's like uh, they're yeah, not really it's, relevant. It's, you know it would, I mean? It's, it's kind of like saying um, Inuyasha is a harem because it's not, it's not just Kagome. Oh, it's you're like you're all, it's thinking like of Rama one half spire. I would say Lum or Ur Ursa Yatsura is what would be the progenitor of most modern harem anime. But it wouldn't be really solidified until. I mean, I I, I would could say... see it being like the progenitor. I mean, it's the progenitor of a lot of things. Um, yeah, it, but it inspired I a lot of things. It. I wouldn't classify it as a harem. I, I think I think the more modern sort of popularization, and again, you can kind of see it in how things spiked after that, actually came around again. And I talk a lot about this in the podcast. Is uh, the 2005 2006 sort of years right where stuff like green no. stuff a lot a lot of sort of no. mechas and fantasy series started dying off Spire, you have to go by stuff like green green and shuffle and so on Spire, you have to go four years before that to love hina that's the one you're thinking of love love hina, hina is 2001 not 2004 if you're Love Hina is definitely yes. I I mean there were series before this, but I don't think it's a lot. Love I Hina. They... Love Hina is the real modern originator of hair of the harem series. I wouldn't say it's a modern original. Yeah, I would say it's a, two, two, one of the forerunners. Two thousand is the is the modern is it, is the modern era aspire, unless you're. Born no, in, what like, I'm 2003. saying, we're, we're talking about like modern structure, right? Yeah, like Love Hina. Like... Yeah, Love Hina's modern structure is still prevalent even today. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, mm, you have I a don't... cast of girls. <laughs> they go, all go after one dude. Hijinks ensue. That's that's it's it's also romantic comedy, but at the same time, it's also a harem. You're defining Infinite Stratos as. A harem anime, but you're disregarding that it's almost exactly like love of what Love Hina started started the whole thing for. I mean, what? Are you, are you gonna say the Love? Hina, are you gonna say also that To Love Rue is not basically Love Hina? I think they're the sort of motivations are slightly different. The reason why I keep saying this is because again, a lot of how do I say this? So. I don't disagree that Love Hina is one of the progenitors of the harem series that we put that we see today. But the difference between what happened pre two thousand five and post two thousand five is this: with a lot of stuff like um, Love Hina, and even you know, if you want to include something like Urusei Yatsura or Inuyasha or whatever, right? The point of this is that it's a romance a little bit more along the lines of something in like a shoujo series uh shoujo manga right excuse me <clears throat> my throat um in a little bit of a shoujo series it's a romantic comedy and then there's sort of more of this there's simply sort of other girls that are forcing this love triangle right which then you might say hey spire but then you literally said before that you part of your pretty much part of your definition was that at its core that um the harem was essentially the love triangle right and yes i did say that but the slight difference is that they are sort of pushing this idea of like sort of 
keeping the romance part of it, if that makes sense. They're not really interested in sort of the who will win. It's more just like, oh, he's loving with this girl and then he's in love with the other girl. It's sort of like that in a sense, but it's not even like it's love with the other girl. It's more just like, oh, here are the romantic elements. The problem part of the problem part of part of what sort of structure is the post 2005 stuff with regards to stuff like green green shuffle a lot of these visual novel uh adaptations stuff like Tolovru, is that they put this stupid ass who win who's in the conflict who's got skin in the game you know who's gonna bash the other person over the head because they're jealous who's gonna run the romantic comedy stick who's gonna run off into the sunset they put this up to 11. And I think that's sort of the modern romantic, or not the romantic comedy, but that's the romant, that's the harem sort of series we have today, if that makes sense. The pre-2005 stuff is much more people kind of thinking along the lines of what's already existing in shoujo, in romance. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a fertilization tournament. <laughs> um, it, it's like romance, but with multiple girls, which is still a sane idea right it's it's like that thing that sort of thing happens sure what happens after 2005 again with the visual novel adaptations it's like it just becomes crazy like there are fucking five girls all at the same time they're all jumping on this bed and you know they're all like how do we how do we fight over him in the shower like all this kind of stuff happening and it's very yeah. well what do you much centralized you, on the conflict you start to get like transitions to gritty realism <laughs> yeah, that has to be realistic, dude. Yeah, like, <laughs> but uh, uh, does that sort of make sense? I know I'm splitting hairs a little bit, but I do feel like there's. I'm not saying that Love Hina isn't like one of the forerunners of hair. It absolutely is. I would be insane. What if I'm say saying otherwise. it's not Spire? What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that in terms of like the modern sort of uh shit we see today, right? And I mean shit in various sense of the words um i think it's a little bit of a different strain it's a little bit different strain of the virus <laughs> does that does that make sense what i'm saying it's it's much less stuff like love hina and so on are much less conflict based it's it's much less like oh you're girl a i'm girl b let's freaking you know let's duke it out fuck <laughs> let's duke it out with our words in chapter 2.5 or something like that when the mc isn't watching us all this bullshit right and i think that's that's a different sort of component we have to take into it's much more conflict focused um i can't believe harem anime started the legendary waifu wars <laughs> yeah but, yeah very hard to believe yeah very hard to unbelievable. believe unbelievable yeah Everyone well, knows should... that Ryoko is the best match for Tenchi. <laughs> Ayaka sucks. Yeah. I I saw I saw Tenchi Universe. I saw <laughs> Tenchi in Tokyo. I saw the other sucky ones. They suck. Tenchi <laughs> Universe was the best one. And I'll and I'll fight you yeah. if you, if you so... think otherwise. So I know this is a the next question I'm going to ask. I'm not going to ask many more questions because it's obviously again. Just with this definition question alone, where we went off into a huge freaking tangent. But um, the second major question I have is another one that sort of goes along the lines of what we've already asked in previous roundtables. But what are the general pros and cons of having a harem as a literary device? <laughs> So again, I guess we'll start with Nier. I know you're a big fan of uh, the genre slash the device, and I would like to hear Nier your thoughts on is it. the foremost expert in hair. <laughs> yes. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, but you're you're modest. the one who's read all of Monogatari, right? You're the one that you're the one that's uh, <sighs> you're, you're, you're the, the one that's getting recommended them all the time. <laughs> you're the expert Nisio Isen, the the new forerunner in harem anime. <laughs> Monogatari is probably the only harem series I've ever really like finished. Like <laughs> the only ones I've ever really Did liked. Did you finish Oreimo? 
<laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Why would I, I do start that? Talking about random hair series that you might have finished. <laughs> no, um, Good. I mean, like I, I watched and enjoyed like uh, is Carnival Lord Phantasm Godom, a you know, harem? Right? Uh, yes. No. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, you saw that one episode. There's like, there's like the one scene in where Carnival Phantasm, yeah, yeah, where like both the MCs are like fighting. You know, all the girls are fighting over them. What? A, no. Um, Nier, you're forgetting about that one episode where Shiro's asleep and then everyone's fighting him for him. Right, yeah, there's that too. But um, hey, going. damn, dude, you just got caught. <laughs> caught red fucking handed. Yeah, okay. Sorry, I don't remember every single scene. But it was Carnival Van well, How do you, how do you not? It's like this, this, what, what, how would, how do you not remember that great episode? Toast Nier? has them right on right on uh, memory. Just yeah, like, Toast a... like Toast can fucking scan through every single episode in his it's brain. Like, it's like that. It's like that one. His and... eyes roll in the back of his fucking head. <laughs> it's like that one um, clip of uh, the the Pro ZD guy or whatever memorizing the entire scene from Peter Pan or whatever. <laughs> but it's that, but with, but with Carnival Phantasm. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, keep going. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, I'm not really like big into harem series. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I uh, I'm okay with like you know, uh, I guess etchy series that are like you know, uh, you know, to love Roo, uh, high school DXT or whatever. Um, but you know, I'm not really big into it. Uh, in terms of the pros, I'm not really sure, right? Because like, <laughs> like, cause. <laughs> Realistically, you know, a harem series. Uh, can I it, can I reformulate a, a sort of a variant question? Do you think? Sure. That, do you think? Do you think harem harem as a literary device is a crutch for authors that can't, um, like do you, so? Let me let me rephrase this in a little bit of a less negative way. Do you think? having a proper stable sort of romantic comedy maybe with a love triangle but mostly with one person right involved uh one or two involved at most do you think that's sort of a more higher level a less a less sophomoric level of character interaction and character development and character story making slash storytelling than a harem is a higher level in terms of like just like in terms like of like having to melt kind your of, fucking brain or what? In, in terms of the author having to actually think about the complexity of character interactions, yeah, the objective yes, of like character interactions being com more complex, the uh, the viewers, etc. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, harem series they're they're <laughs> for the most part roughly romance series, right? Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's there's the backdrop at the very least in pretty much all of them. Um, so like. I would assume the author's goal, uh, for the most part, is to write a romance series, right? No. Mm -mm. Um, uh, obviously, there are authors that are more focused on like a slice of life comedy series, right? Um, you know, something that doesn't necessarily go anywhere. Uh, in which case, obviously, a harem uh, like setup is fine for that. But you know, didn't when... didn't the guy um, who wrote Nisekoi? The previous stuff he had before, obviously, he had like supernatural elements and all this other stuff too, right? But didn't he also, like, in terms of character developments, it was mainly romance stuff, right? Just straight kind of more vanilla romance stuff. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. how he that's how he progressed like the story. And then he was just like he had romance. Yeah, he had romance moments between like all of the cast, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like throughout the entirety of Nisquai, it was like. Here are these moments where, like, you know, romance is happening between the main character and pretty much every single character uh, in the series. But you know, at the end of the day, you you know who's gonna win. It's right, obvious, right, right. Right, right? So it wasn't obvious in the beginning. It was. Uh, it was obvious, like fucking, very early on. Like, let's be honest. No, it wasn't. Um, Do you remember the twists in Nisekoi? <sighs> Stop. <laughs> but um fine. you know like i like i feel like for a series like because the the goal of nisekoi right it was a right. romance series right yes. at the end of the day it's it's pretty obvious um 
Well, I, I think mm, it, it's a romance or another way to phrase it is that it's a harem vehicle with a very obvious one girl end, main girl end. Right. Yes. So my opinion of that is like, that's bad, right? Like that's like, that's okay. not... Can you elaborate? Yes, yes. Like it's not really... When you have a series where okay. you have a very obvious, uh, you know... Um, slash development. Yeah, you have an obvious ending, right? Like mm-hmm. you... Regardless of whether you know one of the girls, like one specific girl is going to win over the other or mm-hmm. whatnot, right? Yeah. Even if the author was able to be like, yeah, you know, not make it obvious, right? Mm-hmm. You know, they're all they're all evenly matched, right? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if you know one of them is going to win, like it, that's the definite ending. That is the obvious like progression the series right. is going for. Yes. It's not going to be satisfactory for majority of the people reading slash watching, right? Mm-hmm. Um. And typically, series like this end, you know, in a really fucking autistic fashion, <laughs> uh, like Hog and I, right? They, yeah. um, you know, very. Oh, oh man! Yes. You know, it's extremely oh, rare that the ending is going to be satisfactory. And if it is satisfactory, it's probably because the girl you were rooting for won, right? Right. Um, or, or the the sort of obvious happened, and the obvious girl wasn't too autistic, right? You know, yeah. She was okay, but. I think there's also another sort of addendum I'd like to posit, which is not only is it kind of less fun when it becomes more and more obvious who's going to win, right? And in, in a one girl ending, that is, right? Yeah. Um, but nowadays, when there's an even further danger where the authors know that this one girl end is coming and they try to say, oh, well, I'll try to put it in a twist or I'll try to make it a different ending just to fuck with you. But then that sort of their attempts at trying to twist it towards this another specified ending starts making the story less and less organic, right? So then it becomes this weird thing where... Yeah, because it, it becomes <laughs> obvious. Like, you can see, like, the scenes of where right, you're right, where the author is, like, essentially distorting exactly. characters to veer off into another yes. direction. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, for me, like, if you're gonna do a romance series, do a romance series. If you're gonna do a love triangle series, do a love triangle series. Uh-huh. Like, you don't need like four to five girls, girls. to do a romance series, right? <laughs> All the girls. You know, <laughs> you if, don't if you're need them near, but I mean, you don't really want them either, right? Because like, mm-hmm. like, what are they adding? You know. Because in terms of, like, if you're looking at it from the perspective, they're adding of, marketing value. Near, yeah, okay, wow, idiot. But like, I mean, if you're looking at the it, the only thing I could, think. yeah, the like only that's the only benefit. Defense. It's the only benefit, like, from the perspective of like a writer, right? Because <laughs> if you're looking at the prospect of like a romance series, right? Like, you know what you want to do, whatever. Uh, nine times out of ten, the author knows who's going to win at the end of the story, regardless, because like. That's the story they're writing. No, they um, don't. I, I see, I've seen up, series was... where, where yeah, the author is like, I don't know where this is going to go. have no idea what the fuck they're doing when they even start a series. Like, <laughs> okay, like publishers fucking don't care who's writing shit. They just throw shit at a wall and see what sticks. But most writers typically have a fucking roadmap. Um, but like... If you're writing a romance series, like the idea of just simply adding more love interests just seems like a bad idea, right? Because mm-hmm. you have to like add screen time for these characters, right? You have mm-hmm. to develop these characters in a manner that makes them like substantial enough for them to be worth like having screen time. Um, all the while trying to balance like your your main lead or what you have like the audience presuming as your main lead. Whatever, right? All right, but um, hear me out. What if, what if they pull a re zero and then they call attention to one of the characters and they're like, "This is this is an important character," and then they smush her to the next volume. <laughs> yeah. Um. What if writers are really bad? I don't know. Like, <laughs> again, like this this notion of writers being like, "Oh, I'm, I'm twisting twisting the story." It's like <laughs> I'm clever. <laughs> you know, 
it's like they're it's like they write towards something and then mm-hmm. like you know they wake up in the middle of the night and they're like oh but what if i did this instead and then they have to like fucking instantly do that because you know if it's not if it's if it's a twist it has to happen suddenly and completely inorganically right um mm-hmm. and it just doesn't make sense for any of the characters especially for Reezer, right mm-hmm. you had this the main character was spending so much time with uh what the fuck was her name rem was the blue haired one yeah I don't yeah know. rem is the blue haired but um like like so much time right um like even for the anime like it was like fucking half of the first season uh was just building up this character and then Ooh. uh the main character is like oh but i love amelia though and then like rem's screen time is just gone right yeah, yeah because exactly. because now the author's like oh but like you know now i have to write up amelia who hasn't yeah. had any development so far like new who, uh, boss romo and i think toast is what? What? Is Toast still alive? Live? What? It seems live for me. Oh yeah, I keep going. Sorry. Yeah, I see. I apologize. Right. But yeah, uh, for for Amelia, it's like the it's a character who really hasn't had, had any screen time, hasn't had any development. Uh for Weezero's case, it's, it's especially bad because she didn't even have like a personality. She's for entire even character. wait for volume fucking thirty seven before. Yeah, like these things. like Amelia's entire personality was asking Puck what to think. <laughs> Like she would literally, she would literally brood for like three seconds. She would turn to Puck and go like, "What do you think?" He would say what he thinks, and she'd be like, "I agree. Let's do that." And like she was fucking. Her head was completely empty. Uh, yeah, pretty. And and the main character was like, "Oh, yeah. I love her." Like, wow. Like, come on, dude. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, yeah. And I mean that's just like bad writing, right? Like that's yeah. that's 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 contained to three characters, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, obviously, writers, there are writers out there that you know they can balance, you know, uh, the the character interactions and screen times between like you know having eight characters. Right. Uh, but uh, considering you know a series that is as popular as ReZero can't mm-hmm. balance that between like two characters. Um, uh, I genuinely don't think that the harem like a uh, vehicle serves any benefit to a romance series. Um, okay. okay, yeah. No, I mean no, I, I definitely get uh what you're saying for sure. And it's it's very unfortunate that the authors kind of took this and kind of ran with it, you know what I mean? It's it's in the modern sort of anime market that well, yeah, I mean, it's like Dark said, a harem series, you know, a series that has a lot of cute girls on the cover. It's easy to kind of it go sells, for you. Yeah, it sells the initial copies. It gets people hooked. And, you know, when when readers are already buying, um, you know, chapters, it doesn't really matter how fucked your series gets. Like, right, just right. look at how fucking popular Nisekoi was, even until its end. <laughs> yeah. Very unfortunate, but um, I guess with that, uh, what about you, Dark? What do you, what do you kind of want to list as the pros and cons of uh, harem series? Yeah, I'm thinking they suck. Um, yeah, <laughs> fuck harem. <you. laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm like honestly, I'm genuinely trying to think of like what's like this really big benefit. Well, I'm trying to. I, I'm, I'm, like gonna, I'm gonna come time, up here and try to every time this, I'm like, but yeah. Every time I, uh, you want I'm, me to go or? <laughs> no, I mean, no, no, no. I mean, I'm not like actually sitting here thinking like. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know what you're saying. I'm just trying to fucking try to be the devil's advocate here. I mean, if you want to do devil's advocate first, fine. Mm. But I, I'm not gonna be like exactly the same. Like for me, it's like yeah. the benefit of a harem series. It w- is literally the number of girls you have on screen. And that's why the only harem series I've enjoyed, really, that I can think of, has been mm-hmm. Monster Musume. Because it's not really about the romance. Yes. It's not really about the main character. It's about like, having oh, a big network of one people. One girl, yeah, it's like, oh, like, you know, you always have people who are like, 
concerned about like who's gonna win in a harem. It's like going in the Monster Moose maze. Like it's irrelevant and realistically, like there's gonna be no winner. Like that's it's just gonna point. be Mia. It's just gonna oh, yeah. It's gonna be the harem or it's gonna be Mia. But it's likely gonna be the harem because the harem's a lot or whatever it is. Right? Well, I mean, yeah. it's not even gonna be like a winner or loser. It's like the series just isn't gonna go there. <laughs> yeah, the, the series is just gonna it's end a, with like the all, the, and all the, the series. Like... girls just like chasing him after into the sunset and being like, "Oh, pick us!" Blah blah blah. You know all that. Yeah, shit. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or or it's just gonna end with like him with some slow life moment with Mio, but with all the girls like still there in their lives. It, it's not gonna be. Because that, that's not the point. The point is to like get the monster girls on screen, get these character designs out there. It's to sell you on that, and it's to have like character interactions based on their character types with each other, like we were talking about earlier. Right, right, right. Which is a lot. Which is again a lot more interesting than like for me, like a romance, like really romance focused harem. That's like just a bunch of different girls interacting with the same like nothing mc or something right <laughs> like because like, who cares at that point like okay like you see all these girls but you pretty much know what they're about second one so just having just them in isolation isn't really doing it for you right, right, right. so i think that and the added bonus again of like well like added interest of just Monster Girls is still going to be better <laughs> because it adds at least some other layer to it, right? Right, right, right. Um, but it's like even then, it's not that great. Romance is romance and harem. I think it's just a complete for recipe ballgame? for disaster. Oh, yeah, it's just yeah. like a complete, like like a strict romance where it's like, oh. Who, it, like, who's he going to choose? Will they, won't they? But with, like, eight different characters is just, like... Like Nier said, like, someone's going to come out just not... A majority of your viewers aren't going to enjoy the ending. Yeah, because, that's true. <laughs> because you have it split so many different damn ways. And, uh... I mean, the other the other quote-unquote benefit is just what Session brought up in chat. Like, you can fucking drag this on for eight years. <laughs> because... You have now, like, not only do you have the romance series aspect of, like, will they, won't they? Then you have, like, the starts of, like, a relationship almost, right? Like, yeah, I think, I think I think one of the cancerous things about the modern sort of ha harem series is the fact that the machine now is so well designed to, like, be able to just kind of continue 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 without like it's like a perpetual freaking motion machine until they just need some sort of out like the author is just tired and they're they just say okay i want it out and then boom they just conclude with some sort of vague conclusion and they're out but before that they can just keep on churning and churning and churning and churning for instance look at all the sort of um i guess more modern popular um i guess more mainstream say series right uh like nisekoi like something like data live or something like um one I, I wouldn't say probably the most the absolutely most egregious offender of this is probably Hayato no Gotoku, right? Hayato no Gotoku, Hayato Combat Combat Butler spent five hundred million freaking chapters going nowhere. And everybody's just like, what's happening? What's wrong with the jewel? Why can't Luca win? What's happening? Right? Did that series <laughs> and, ever end? I don't even know. It was it was so dumb. And I was like, and it was people kind of just let it go on. It's not like it really declined in popularity. It just kept going and going and going and going. And people just kind of wanted to see the end, or they were kind of caught up by the characters, or what have you. And it was just a continual cancer machine. It was just it was it was a tumor that one could not get rid of. It was disgusting it was horrendous it just had no end and i i think unfortunately again the modern harem series is are all built like that are all built like that and unless they have the harem as part of whatever else it is they're doing but a series that starts off with the premise okay you're stuck in a house with three girls or you're stuck in a house with eight girls or you're stuck in a house with 
7.5 girls, whatever it is, right? Um, in these sorts of series. Oh, so it's how I showed you. Yes. <laughs> uh, the, the people that step on a minefield. But uh, the the issue with this is that it's just a perpetual, like, <sighs> machine that just never ends and it's insatiable and it's just, like, it just, like, tires me to even think about it. And it's just... Well, to me, the wor the the worst part that I was going to sin uh, sin brought up in chat, mm. like you have these eight different characters at, in my opinion, the worst point to me in a romance series, like the very beginning, which I'm always because it's always you have before a lot of it's the will they won't yeah, well, yeah. yeah 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 you have the There's romance no a lot like pretty much a majority of romance series at this point are just will they won't they. Right, like it's always will they, won't they? And then once it gets to okay, yeah, they will. It's over. Like, the yeah, there, series ends. there, there are very few after story sort of series, which I think also. It's not even just after story. It's like it could just be the series. Like <laughs> you, no, what, like, what really, I'm saying, what, like, what, what I'm saying is that what would be the after story of most harem series is usually not portrayed. Is, oh is yeah, well, saying. I yeah. mean that's even if they choose, and then it's like. Right. To me, it's a matter of, you know, you have that spread across like eight different characters. And so that's why it's like so drawn out. And to me, I'm just like, well, like this isn't even the most interesting part of like of what a relationship series would be or what a romance series would be. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I think in recent memory, the only shit I can think of. It's like maybe um Wotakoi, right? Like maybe because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they were like kind of in a relationship for that series. Well, they they're not shit. even doing yeah, like some sort of like hammer. Yeah, they're doing a yeah. crazy. No, no, no. But I'm saying like as as a romance series. Oh right? yeah, yeah, like, yeah, that's no. in yeah, yeah. the relationship. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. like not only for me like. You're using this to just get these characters there, but also it's oh. like now you have what I. A lot of those series are like stuff the like part Wotico. I find the most boring in a romance yeah. series. Literally eight times in a row in front of it, just with a different yeah. character. Yeah, I, I think also kind of the unfortunate thing is some of those sort of more standard after story like Wotokoi, right? Stuff is a little bit less imagin imaginative than I would have liked because a lot of it almost ends up being formulaic similar to. It draws parallels to four girls in a club series. And but what I mean by that is a lot of these sorts of after story. What happens when these two get in a relation? What happens when the Yankee girl who likes um, FPS games gets, or what is it? The Yankee girl who actually likes, uh, I don't know, freaking dress up or some cute things in secret gets along with the, with the other guy who who who's who who looks ugly or scary but then he's actually into making puppets or whatever the fuck it is and then their fetishes mix and then they all have you know sex or whatever it is right and this this sort of uh, all, there's a standard formula that's been coming out these days where like Wotokoi, it's this thing where two people with the same um sort of hobby or with distinctly opposite personalities that are mixing together or they secretly join together and start doing something, right? Some hobby or some sport or some fetish or whatever it is, right? Uh, you know, the whole, the whole series trends with um, Nanato Kaoru or like stuff like SM, SM uh, fetish related manga, stuff like that, right? Are sort of along the same line where they're hooked up together and then they start exploring this hobby or they start exploring this fetish or whatever it is. And every sort of chapter or every arc is this introspection or retrospection being like oh uh i never knew it's so enjoyable to share this ho hobby with somebody or something like that right <laughs> and it, it's it's a very very um it's really unfortunate because i think the actor stories can be a little bit more creative than that it can be a little bit more focused on the characters and their personalities but it's a little bit a lot of it's kind of more focused on the specific hobbies that they do, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what I was, again, like what I was really getting at is just that, you know, they're, 
like not only like because for for a romance series like i want the pre and the after story as just the story like right right tell me the story if you want <laughs> right. the early the Don't early make this part, an epilogue <laughs> yeah like, if you want the early part to be like faster sure that's fine you know give me more than that i mean like mm-hmm. realistically like maybe chunibyu is like the only one that i've watched at this point that i'm like yeah that was pretty pretty well paced to like set up and then get into the relationship yeah what, what um, i also wanted to mention was that do you think that this obviously you're not the only one that wants an after story right there's been so, such a dearth of after stories there's been so many playing hard to get will they won't they blah blah that there are probably more people than you might realize that want this after story me included myself included right but, but do um, you really want an after story? Remember yes. the last after story that we got that everyone hated? What was it? Are you talking about Gotoban? What are you talking about? Huh? No, I'm talking about Boruto. You really want <laughs> you really want a, you want an after story? That oh, it, literally did? the great part about Boruto is that it's an after story and yeah, you have these true. fucking yeah, God ninjas walking around. <laughs> yeah, and just it's name like bullshit. Stuff. The after exactly. story like, aspect Boruto is what added... people like about Boruto. Yeah, like, yeah that it, is actually when true. they when they go back to like, you know, like the original characters and how they develop. Like that's what people really like about. Boruto. Yeah, honestly, the most boring parts of Boruto is when it's like has nothing to do with Naruto. Yeah, and it's just Boruto being very angsty. Yeah. But, yeah. um, and it's just like here's like Naruto shit, but with like Boruto, and I'm like, well, yeah, I'd exactly. rather just see like how they're interacting with like the fact that their parents are gods, but fine. Yeah, exactly. But, <laughs> just glowing gold. I mean, five. as far as like romance after stories, like would I want to see more of fucking After Fate Stay Night, the college shit? Yeah, would that be cool? <laughs> that's <laughs> that called, that's called like, Hollow like, Ataraxia. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, um, or, or what I want to finish saying was that. Do you think that the rise of these sorts of high fantasy themed slave owning, you know, <laughs> go into this feudal thing, hook up with the elf and the orc and the dwarf and whoever, right, the centaur, whatever, do you think this is fueled by this desire for the after story? Because no. in those cases, then it's just they don't have to work. They, the will they, won't they? isn't as much of a prerequisite, right? The In these isekais where they have a slave owning and the monster girls and blah, blah, often No, because I feel like that winds up turns into... that. One, I feel like that winds up still going through the motions of, like, the early relationship shit because, obviously, there's, like, there's more than one character. Yeah, but right? what I'm saying is that, is that a lot of... What I'm saying is that... Do you think a lot of these slow-life isekais or these things, slave-owning isekais... These specifically themed as these like popular, but relatively specific isekais where they're already kind of hooked up with the girls. They're already joined up the hit, right? The re- I, do you think the reason for these sorts of popularity, their rise in popularity, is this sort of hankering for the after story? Is is what I was just. I, I, I don't. Th- I don't particularly think so. I. I mean, I think there's a lot of aspects in that, especially like the fucking like slave girl like thing to begin with. I think that's. A, I mean, if we want to get into the discussion of that, just really quick, I think that's just a. Sort of a power play. No, nah, it's a power play, but I think it's more of just a broken, like broken mess, like type character, like ideal, like you want to fix something essentially. Oh, um, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so it's like, yeah. Okay. Now I get what you mean. So it's like it's like helping the, helping the girl save the kitten from the tree, but it, it, like that, like magnified a hundredfold, and you don't have to do as much. Well, it's almost like. Well, it's also like you know taking in like, like think about it, like think of it like a, <laughs> like a fucking drug addict or something like that but right. we can't have that because that's already too unclean right right so we need the virgin slate that's what we need <laughs> so we, yeah. i think like that that's part of what fuels that but i think those series are honestly the inverse and a lot of it is by like 
just wanting more and more of like those very beginnings of the relationship right, right? right like yeah. not not like yeah okay so they're not meeting up and it's not like a will they won't they thing but it kind of still is a will they won't they but now re in the context of like they're still together regardless in that sense yes yeah, so so, so... In a sense, the the slave your word you're saying is it's not that it's focusing on the actor story. It's more that the author gets to have their cake and eat it too, in a sense, right? Because they have both the beginning where they can choose like the main girl or whatever, but then in the isekai or with the slave owning or whatever with monster girls, it's like even if they choose the main girl, oftentimes the other girls are just like, eh, fuck it. Let's just <laughs> let's just let's just yeah. I mean, it's like they're still yeah. around, or it's like What's even up? if. <laughs> <laughs> like even if they don't like choose the main one it's like there's the author is still able to like do in a sense do a lot more scenarios with them mm -hmm. because it's like they're just stuck there anyway like no right. matter what happens they're right. pretty much stuck so right, right, right. you can do more in that sense right, and right, get right. away with more later temptation easy. side stories or whatever Something yeah, like there's yeah. temptation. There's more dynamics you can do yeah. with that that are specific to like mm -hmm. the slave shit. But it's just in that sense, I still think it does fall under like they'll still wind up doing a lot of like the beginnings thing, right? Mm -hmm. You'll still have the girls like fighting over them, even if it's like, you know, hey guys, I got this sick new, these six fucking awesome new slaves, like. <laughs> And that, is, they, gonna, that like, is an fight. audio clip we're going to put a clip up. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah, so it's like, you have, it's, but, you know, and then yes. it just still turns into, like, that banter between them that, and then them interacting with the main character in the same way. So, right, 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 right. I think it's still an easy tool in that sense. Yeah. Um. So, so I guess I'll kind of um, talk briefly about what I'm thinking about. Uh, harem yeah it, it was it was it, we talked a little bit about the during it during the isekai roundtable but uh, i think we're doing a deeper dive of it here so when i said i was going to act as a devil's advocate i didn't really mean it. i meant sort of having a different sort of perspective on how yeah, okay, again, this guy's running it back yeah <laughs> so he's dodging, sweating yeah. yeah um so I want to kind of approach the harem as again the literary device and not sort of whatever people think of in the community and how kind of people approach it. But um, I think the closest analogy I thought of to what using harem in a story is like is using steroids using stuff like anabolic steroids or performance enhancing drugs or whatever for sort of a fitness athlete and what i mean by that is there are there are ways that a harem can really kind of boost what you're doing specifically and kind of really be able to kind of project that in a good sense but there are just so many inherent sort of danger along dangers along the way you know what i mean and oftentimes again much like steroids um and and performance enhancing drugs people don't really utilize it well right <laughs> people don't really utilize this device well so yeah they don't do the rotation they take too much and they yeah, exactly. explode after like three years <laughs> they 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 forget <laughs> the, the analog for the hair is <laughs> they introduce all the girls and then it's just like one girl for like freaking 15 chapters for some reason yeah you're supposed to have an on off rotation yeah exactly like, what the fuck are you doing you got a cycle <laughs> hey, uh, don't dude. have a cycle like, you're just gonna die you're just gonna yeah. fucking have your heart you gotta, you gotta you gotta keep the small doses but um so what what I mean by this, um, extending the analog in a little bit, but it's harem is device wise in terms of functionally what it does, not not like what its motivations are as the love triangle, right? <laughs> but functionally, what a harem does is 
and this might sound sound obvious, but it adds more people. Duh, right? Um, so it adds more people, and it already establishes a relationship uh, with important members of the cast, right? So it's not there's a difference between just having characters just like along the side, like some shit that happened in Guilty Crown or whatever, where people are just like, yeah, I'm terrorists, or like, yeah, I'm here, just fuck you guys, and and the viewers just like, what, what's going on again? Why do I care about this? And in the harem, you have this sort of established relationship with this established people, and it's very sort of smooth going from there in terms of the beginning of why this character is here, how this character is going to develop, so on and so forth. So there are more people that are just chucked in, and there are obvious benefits to this, right? To having these sorts of characters with smooth transitions in and out of the cast, which is there are more people with, there are various personalities and various reactions that you can kind of turn to as the author, right? Um, <laughs> I'm implying the only characters who are added later that matter are the ones that want to fuck the MC. Yes, those are the only ones I want to see in, in, in a story. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, when we add more people, naturally, it, this is a natural consequence. I don't think anybody can argue. There are simply more people to talk to, more different types of personalities to engage with, and different sort of interactions that can happen within the cast, right? And if the author is good, they'll take these different interactions and potential different personalities that can happen and expand them into this sort of pseudo world building, as I've described with, you know, world building with the characters as the focus um, and make the world, make the, make the story better and make the, make the cast more and more organic. And by having more characters that are all organic, it becomes a much, much more complex and dynamic and believable and fun and varying world and story for people to be engaged in. Because again, the author is juggling the character successfully. But as is often the case, when that doesn't happen and some characters are just kind of left on the wayside and, uh, and some of the characters are just like, oh, I just want to fuck the MC or, you know, whatever it is, or they're, they're just left in the dumpster for five chapters and then they come back in this arc or whatever happens with them or they, their only method of interaction is with the MC and they don't talk with the other girls or whatever it is, right? Um, then it quickly devolves into a dumpster fire. And yeah, um, since I was in chat, uh, it doesn't have to be a for that though. And that's very true. I did. I didn't say it has to be hair for that. And this is again. This is this is the analog, right? It's it's like steroids. Like you just pump it in, and then boom, 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 boom. It like it's very specifically adds a it, it adds this sort of like strength. It adds this sort of like um, like volume to what whatever it is you're doing in terms of story wise, right? Yeah, it's like the potential's uh, there instantly, yeah. but but you can get fucked you know, up by it. Don't execute. You get, <laughs> yeah, you can get fucked up by it and doesn't. And a lot of people don't know how to execute this. And you can have the similar results with the with a regular cast, right? You can have four or five or six people, and they're all complex characters, and they're not, you know, one guy and six million girls. You can have, you know, you know, more than one dude in the story, and you know, less than seven girls in the story. Right, well, now and... you've <laughs> crossed the line. Yeah, exactly. But... And, and you can have all these charming and complex characters, but admittedly, it's harder to introduce them and kind of hard, harder for authors to actually think about and slipstream them, slip them into the story um, when they don't fall from the sky with the, under the guise of, yeah, by the way, I'm, uh, I'm a mythical spirit sent from God and uh, I'm your fiance, by the way. <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? Well, it, it, it's it, it's much harder to kind of slip them in and then get the conversation going. Uh, with, yeah, I mean, I, I would just say the counter. Well, not really counter, but like the yeah. flip side of that. Then is that it's like that makes the assumption that you know you have a harem, and the author instantly goes, 
okay, well, obviously, since I have eight female characters, I need different personalities for all of them. And then yes, they wind okay, up just yeah, being these, like, saying, very yeah. <laughs> defined and locked in, like, personalities. I mean, I, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find an author that's going to pull off, like, more than, you know, six uh, fucking female characters in a harem with, like, dynamic personalities to begin with. Right. right, 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 and again, this is this is what I mean by saying it. This is the danger of 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 the of the harem, right? It's like it's very, yeah. it's not easy. It's it, the author has to be good because in a harem, um, obviously some stories have it where the each of the characters kind of come in one at a time, right? It's they spend one volume and then they come in, and they they spend another volume and another one comes in. Oh, oh I'm traveling to another land. Here's Here's some sort of uh, Hitler Nazi themed empire, and then there's a secret female officer who who doesn't think she should be in the empire. Blah, blah, blah. I, now she's joined my side, and you know all this. All right, well, you don't need to bring Grand Blue into this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, and all this crap, right? Um, there, there's like ways to slow down the pacing and all that shit, right? But, uh. It's a danger because at the end of the day, you're going to have to juggle all of these characters that are in your face. And the harem characters are going to be in your face. They're not going to be like, uh, say, maybe some other more complex, let's say, like mystery themed or some other sort of more varying, you know, male, female cast. They can kind of go in and out because they're kind of all doing their stuff. Oftentimes, the harem, the, I mean, the part of the point of the modern harem, especially again, is the conflict. It's the fact that they're always in the, they're, I almost said opponents, but always in the main character's face. They're always going to be like, hey, uh, main character, Takashi or whoever, right? It's like, uh, like, how are you doing today? Like, am I earning more points with you? Blah, 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 blah. And they're always, the point is for them to always jump at the, freaking MC's, you know, uh, lower half. And uh, because they're always in the face, in the story, in the main, trying to be in the spotlight, the author has this further necessity to juggle all of them instead of being like, all right, well, I don't know about this girl. This girl can kind of like be on the side for a bit. Like they're, they can't do that as much with the heroes, right? No. Um, I think that's sort of how I see harems. I think there is a pro, but it's difficult to utilize if the author is stupid. And Shocker. I want to say, <laughs> unfortunately, it is, and even if the author is smart, I think it becomes increasingly, ex almost exponentially harder to utilize as the number of girls increase. Again, because they have to juggle, right? I mean, even index and stuff like that, right? Where they just have to juggle item in one scene and then maybe accelerator in one scene and then I don't know, like Misaka in like another scene and they have to juggle kind of three perspectives. The author's already just getting wound up all over the place, right? And the author of a harem series has to kind of juggle all these perspectives because the nine girls, while they all have to be in the story constantly, are not always going to be in the same room, right? Some the girls are going to be uh, doing something in the basement. Some of the girls are going to be out passing the alchemist shop. Some of the girls are going to be macking with the main character. Some of the other girls are going to be in some sort of knight's tournament, blah, 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 blah. And the author is going to have to jump around to all these perspectives and cover them and note their interactions with each of the other girls and then uh, also make some aside like, some like maybe the night girl has some inner monologue like oh man what if what if the MC notices me and by the way all these examples I'm listing I'm not pulling the shit out of thin air I've literally read and <laughs> I'm sure near and dark and toast of all have, have heard have no kind of know an example from where what I'm talking about right <laughs> like the night girl who's like oh man it'd be really nice if if the MC could cheer for me when I'm in the finals or some bullshit like that right. Um, yeah, and all of this, because there's so much time splitting going on, um, it's just very difficult for uh, an author to handle, even if they're good at it. 
And so when the author is not good at it or makes less than uh, organic personalities or what have you, all these inherent dangers with harems, I think it becomes um, a dumpster fire real quick. And again, um, much <laughs> much like the, the steroid example I mentioned, I think even if you utilize it to the best of your abilities, there are still some lasting damage. For instance, again, stuff like what we talked about with Bakemon Megatari, right? Or, um, I don't know, what, what are some seri- some harem series that might have survived the test of time? Uh, the World God only knows? Yeah, stuff like Kaminomi, but even in these sorts of series, you kind of see sort of the wounds, right? So the, the, the wounds or sort of the lasting damages of the series. Again, and for instance, when we talked about Bakemon Megatari, the sort of figurative wound in the series would be Kambaru's and Hanukkah's endings, right? Where yeah. they had so much investment in them. And freaking Hanukkah had, what is it, three movies, right? Because it was a three-parter? Or was it a two-parter? I forget. Uh, it was a three-parter, yeah. Yeah, it was a three-parter, yeah. But, so, you know, yeah, she she has like, I mean, if yeah. you want to break it down into like the novels, she, she has like yeah. what, four or five yeah, some novels ridiculous alone. number, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. so so she has like four novels and three movies and whatever invested into her and then I don't know, like, bah, I don't know I think it's too much <laughs> right yeah so, so those are sort of these sorts of like uh disjuncted unrealistic inorganic kind of uh storytelling story story flaws right are the lasting impacts of having slash using harem right yeah, so I, though I think, to yeah. to be fair to Monogatari, it does like especially with Hanakawa because she gets so much screen time, mm-hmm. um, and like you know, uh, there are those moments where Aragi's just like, yeah, nah, um, you know, eventually they do like go into like why Aragi does that, like what he's you know thinking uh, on the situation, like you know they do try to justify it right you know mm-hmm. it's not just like uh you know they're just like, yeah um fuck this character you know <laughs> um they, they do at least try to like somewhat organically be like or he's like the main character is like actually giving thought into the decision why yeah making, no right? yeah for sure for sure yeah but but again i think i think even that is on the better end of sort of again damage is done by a harem series so again i think it can show some uh decent significant benefits if uh utilized in a correct manner but it is extremely hard and often not likely to the author is not likely to escape lasting damages done to his story due to using the harem device is what I want to say. But yeah. Uh, and last but not least, I guess we'll just kind of uh, round start rounding up with I this question to again. Yeah, toast. No, no, no. What, what I want to say is I, I was thinking of doing like a third sort of question, but I'll probably just run conclusions after this. But um, toast. Did you want to speak a little bit about the pros and cons of the genre? The, the best, the best part of hair anime is when it gets a, when it's hentai. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Toast. My 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 favorite one right now is the one where where. Uh, where, where that dude gets recruited by this red-haired elf, and he goes to like Alfheim, and he's all like, "Oh, there's no, there's no more elf, there's no more hu- humans in the world. We need, we need, we need your, we, we need your body to produce offspring." And then, and then he gets captured by elves, and then the dark elves come, and they're like, "We heard you have a human man. We want some of that." And then the elves are like, "No." But then the dude's like, but they're dark elves. That's cool. I want in on this. And then and they're all like, damn. All Toast right. is listing like fucking 80 series right now. <laughs> but uh, do, you, do you want the title? Not really. Why not? 
pretty good. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> oh my god. What? You, you, do, you, don't, you don't want in on a Dos Kabe Elf no Ishuka? Is that the one? I don't know, dude. Uh, Dos no, you, that's not it. it bro? Uh, let, let, me, let me bring up my fan. You that's can, not you can link. You can link it later in DMs and then I'll try to I'll read it out loud or something. But, so, uh, it's like something Elf no Mori. It's great. Well, there's a lot of Elf no Mori because that means yeah. they're in the forest of the elves, right? So it's, <laughs> there, a, a lot of elves lives, tend to live in the forest. You know, you know what would be great? If Yokoso just... Sukebe Elf no Mori. That's oh, the one. Oh, freaking. That, that VN. Is, isn't that a VN novel? Yeah. No. That's, no, it's not. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I, I've it's, heard it's, that name. Yes, before. it is. Fire, what's, yeah, okay. what's wrong with you? <laughs> okay. Yeah, what are you uh, fucking stupid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I apologize. Is, uh, is, is, is the legendary ice cream one? That's not a harem, is it? No. Um, But yeah, just. Do you want to, again, kind of get back on topic and talk about... Oh, all right, topic? all right. What sucks about harem is the protagonists suck. Why Why are they always wishy-washy, clueless bo- simps? The, the because thing is, if they weren't, then the series would be over. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's like... Well, see, I don't think that's necessarily true. Well, okay, it, it's, it's hard. It, the author has to think a little again, bit harder goes... to have both a an MC that can kind of just... Uh, side on something and have a will they won't they situation is i think how i want to say it right yeah i mean it yeah. depends on how it's set up too because I, I wouldn't yeah. say i wouldn't call the like mc of monster moves to me like wishy-washy he's, right? he's not definitely not but the modern trend he's is getting blown over yeah but yeah yeah i mean it's like most harem mcs at this point it's like it's are, like oh uh, literally I, I have to have 20 chapters Hanging out with this girl because the other girl rejected me. But it's like, do I really love her? I don't know. Let me ask the other girl. The other girl's like, I don't care. Do what you want, Bach. And he's like, oh, damn. I'm into that. It's like... What about... What about uh, what, can you think of any sort of pros or anything? I like? just listed it. Wait, wait, which is... Sorry, could you repeat that? It's got... Makes, One. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, but but not but not NTR. That no thanks. No, okay. I, I like my relationship here. Thank you. Like in data live. <laughs> so what else? What else? Oh. Uh, we already you, you guys we already talking about how most of the girls in harem are, are fetish bait, right? Oh, is that a plus? Maybe. If you're a coomer. <laughs> I guess. I guess I'll put that as my plus. Yeah. You get you gotta check out check out that twin tails versus that ponytails. Yeah. And then the drills. It's like that's cool. Check out those neat hairstyles. Short haired girl will always lose. That's a that's obvious. Senior, we should we should just deep dive into the what the topic I suggested sometime later. <laughs> sometime down the road. <laughs> you should just do it. <laughs> Fuck it. But it but but, but but yeah, uh Yeah. What what other positives? I don't know. I guess it spawned the romantic comedy genre as well. Sure. I guess that's positive. Even though romantic comedy is way better yeah. than harem. I don't think that's true. Yeah, I wouldn't agree that it spawned the romantic comedy genre. Yeah, I know. If anything, it's the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> you could yeah. say the same thing about Isekai and SAO, but I'm not going to. Unless you want to bring it up, I'll br- we can talk about oh, it right now. Not doing that right now. Oh, but uh, yeah. What else? So- uh, I guess that's it. You guys already listed it. Okay, oh, yeah, oh wait, here, here's another one. Yes. Here's 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 a quick. It's 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 easy cash. Quick and easy cash, my dudes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. We we kind of we kind of also imply that with the whole like marketing value thing. Yeah. Too, yeah. Um, okay. Is ne- was Negima? Would you consider Negima a harem series? No. Mm. Maybe. Are we, I, I know it started off as one, but the author's like, screw you guys. Screw you, editor. And then he went straight into, into the, the battle, battle shown, and I was like, yeah, that's the good stuff. I would. I. 
Well, no, I, I think I think it started out definitely, and then it kind of. I think it's still at the end of the day because it does pack a significant amount of that in the earlier parts. I think it would have. It's kind of like because it's kind of like. Um, but he didn't get together with anyone. You only hear about wait. I mean, neither did well, he, um. Dempa, he, I, there's a he, lot of harem protagonists that didn't get along with. Get along, get, you mean like get uh, don't don't, don't you mean like Haganai? Oh boy, I love Haganai. Or even um, uh, Dempa Kyoshi didn't. Uh, Does that even count? That he didn't. It was just two girls, Dempa right? Kyoshi is definitely ten times more of a harem than Nagima was, <laughs> for sure. And uh, but yeah, was true. Want... Is True Tears a harem? I hate True Tears. Uh, I forget. Wait, what? You 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 said Dempa Kyoshi and not Ona Guy Teacher? What's wrong with you? Dempa Kyoshi was just something that popped into my mind after Negima. <laughs> but uh, is Fire Force a harem? <laughs> Fire Force. Think of that. Is is brand new animal a harem? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the? F all right. All right. We, I mean, we, Fire right. Force actually has like you know four oh, yeah, or yeah. Can, can, five right, thirsting female characters. Yeah. <laughs> Can we can we can we wrap this up? So what I want to kind of go around to each of each of you guys was just kind of give a short, I guess, thoughts on um just very brief, you know, maybe one or two paragraphs at most, but um just what your thoughts on maybe like a wish on what you would wish harem would be. Uh, I did. And <laughs> this guillotine creature. <laughs> um, so I'll I'll start first. I wish harem would both be more accept. Well, at the same time, both be more accepted by the community and be taken upon by authors who are willing to run the challenge of juggling all of the characters and making all the characters properly if they are not ready for that challenge and they're just kind of throwing it in because they don't they just want more marketing value or they're just like oh well i don't know really how to develop this character so i'll just make another character with a slightly different personality and then just chuck her in okay this girl is angry a lot of times and this girl other girl is just sad a lot of times all right let's just put them in if it's like that i don't think they are ready for the responsibility and I don't think that they should use it. Um, so yeah, I just want a little bit more involvement with the use of the harem genre. Mir. Um, I don't know. I feel like <laughs> I feel like to me, I kind of want harem to kind of just stay in its lane. You know, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, <laughs> you know, it should just know its place. No, um, <laughs> like, like I was saying earlier, you know, I, I, I genuinely don't think that like the harem, uh, vehicle really serves any value, uh, okay. adds like anything. Uh, if anything, it's a detriment to, uh, like a romance series, right? Okay. Like a yeah. series that is intended to be a romance mm -hmm. uh, plot. Um, but you know, uh, I, I think it's fine in something that's like more, you know, aimless. Doesn't really have like an end goal. Uh, you know, maybe it's more like episodic. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like some. Uh, I guess I. Uh, I guess you could call it like a brainless, um, sort of like a rom com comedy, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, something that just like uh, junk food, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fine there. Uh, you know, it, it's easier to do without fucking up. Um, it's probably much easier to balance your characters out when you're just like doing like episodic uh, skits or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, it sounds kind of harsh, but I feel like Harem can kind of just like stay where it belongs, you know, where it works. Um, what do you mean by where it works? Well, like what I said, you know, like just like a, uh, you know, a more episodic like rom com type of thing, oh, okay, where like okay. you know, you're not bringing up drama, you're not bringing up, um, 
you know, like, oh, who's going to win? You know, I mean, you could have something like that in, like, you know, uh, uh, I guess a rom com thing. But uh, as long as you're not, like, as long as the end goal isn't, like, just fucking piss off, like, four People. fifths yeah. of your viewer base, you know? <laughs> Um, uh, it works, right? Like, people like it, you know? It has its plays. Uh, I'm not going to say that, like, you know, if you like a harem series, you're a fucking stupid idiot or anything. Um, okay, so, so, can I, can I say, okay, say so that. what if, what if, what if, the, yeah, what if you were talking with this, you know, you had, like, some sort of mangaka friend or somebody who's about to, you know, really, like, set out to write his first light novel or manga, manga or whatever, right? His first? Or, Sure. Yeah, his first, or whatever, first, second, something like that. Or he's doing this and trying to do branch out into like a more like unique like story or whatever. But um, he says, okay, well, I have this sort of like you know action fantasy, whatever it is. It could be cyberpunk, it could be space, something, blah blah, blah anything, right? But then I kind of. I want to kind of like draw girls and I have, you know, I have a couple of, <laughs> I have a couple of things in mind and I also kind of want to, I don't know about making a harem, but I kind of want to just draw like a lot of girls and stuff like that. Right. What would you say to him? Um, I don't think, I don't think this is too far fetched because it's like, there are plenty of people yeah. in the movies that are like, uh, I think you know it that would... women can be like main character. Yeah. I, I think it would, <laughs> it, it would yeah, depend yeah. on what he intends to do with like the designs he wants to draw. Right. Like right. if he's going to, like if, if the end goal is like, Oh, I want to make this mega series. Um, but you know, I have all these like cool female designs. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, why don't you just say like, fuck the male protagonist and make mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, a more killer, like, like kill. female cast. Yeah, you know? yeah, more, more like, like kill, I, kill I think, stuff. I think if you're gonna make an action series, uh, or really just any, like any series that's not like the main draw, is uh, like rom com harem stuff. Mm -hmm. Like if like the idea, you know, like an infinite stratos or something, right? Where it's like, mm -hmm. you know, we have mechs, but also it's harem series, right? <laughs> I feel like, uh, yeah. I feel like if you're gonna do that, like just make a female cast. Right, mm -hmm. like, do Sifa gear kind of. Y you know, do people really do? Yeah, do writers... actually, pretty much. Or girls in Panzer. Yeah, do, do writers Very really popular. think that, like, you know, to, in order to make your your action series with all these girls, you desperately need a fucking generic, like, self insert male protagonist? You need, like, you, need really. that, you need you need those wheels on a spoke interaction. And again, yeah. for the the viewers who don't know what I mean by wheels on a spoke or spokes on a wheel, excuse me, is that uh the the mc acts as the center of the wheel and the girls each act as a spoke yeah <laughs> that's like only interacts with the mc yeah yeah i i don't think that is both like necessary or really like healthy to um like br the brainstorming process of like writing a series that isn't like already intending to be a harem series you know what i mean right right, right. um but yeah if I if I had a friend that was like writing a comic or a manga or something, and he's like, I have all these cool female designs, and you know, I kind of want to put them in this series that's, uh, you know, maybe not typically like full of girls. It's, right. I'd, be, I'd just say like, fuck it, make put it a female in. cast. Yeah. Like, okay. Who cares, right? Right. Right. Um, you really don't need to just be like, oh. But there's this dark-haired protagonist. <laughs> fucking cool. It's, no, you really don't need that. Right, right, um, right. That's a very yeah. good point. Yeah, I, 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 I do, I do think harem has its place, mm -hmm. and I it's honestly, just far away from you. It's just yeah, far away from you. I, I honestly feel that like the place harem does well, um, should stay where it is, and. When the harem tries to like branch out into other genres, it doesn't do well. Those are my honest thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, th th I definitely understand that for sure. I, and I empathize with pretty much everything I uh, said. Obviously, people need to be very careful about you know dealing with it. Dark. Let's say you. Do you have a sort of wish you might want to do? You might want from the genre, from the community that dabbles with it. Um, 
I would say, I mean, a wish, a fucking like Clean. way over just optimistic approach would be like, you know, look at something like, like, I don't think like Monster Musume is like a fucking shining beacon of a series, right? <laughs> it is still that like dessert, that like, you know, guilty pleasure ish sort of thing to me, but. I think it is a decent example of like, if you're going to do this and you're going to have a harem series, for the love of God, don't focus too much on the fucking protagonist. Like, it's not that important. Mm -hmm. Like, if that's what you're trying to make, you're just trying to like put all these girls here and like, yeah, you want to have, you know, an interaction with a male MC. You want to have like the actual, like the romantic interactions. Those are still pretty basic. Like, you don't need to get into the MC like that much in order to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say, like, keep that way simpler. Like, because honestly, the the strange, like, duality of a lot of these insert characters is that it's like, they're an insert, they're supposedly an insert character, but then it's like, they're just chock full of all these super cool, interesting fucking things. And it's like, well... It's not much of an insert character anymore when you're giving them like all of the like not even personality, just like all these aspects to them and like all this more solo screen time or just like way too much of their side of it and right, not enough right. of like exactly. the interaction of the girl. <laughs> like focus focus on what the interaction would be that this girl would have more so than like what the MC is having as an interaction with this girl, right? It's it, use the it, MC actually, as the tool. What, what you're talking about kind of sounds like um almost like a love advice, you know what I mean? It's like to you'd say to a guy, it's like stop fucking fantasizing about fantasizing about like what yeah, how you kind of like imagine the girl as it's kind of like, you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> It's like treat the girl yeah, as like a person kind of thing, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just like that's the more interesting part. I'm not here to fucking see this same black-haired protagonist. They don't give a shit. Like, <laughs> like who Yo, the fuck need, cares? You need to self-insert. How? how like, well, that's self-insert? the thing. It's like, <laughs> for me, it's like an easier self-insert is the Monster Musume protagonist. It's right. the fucking protagonist from... Uh, from pre-Kone, who, like, barely even speaks. Right, right, right. You know, like, that's an easier, like, self-insert, like, factor to it, right? Like, you can do a lot more with that. You can do a lot more with, like, Grand and Grand Blue. Right, right, exactly. Because he's he's kind of just running around, like, actually kind of being productive and doing stuff, too. I mean, I don't know if I'm, like, an outlayer in this regard, but personally, I genuinely, like, I d- like don't self insert into characters outside of like silent protagonists in video games. I mean, in that what sense, if they're Canadian? I don't, but it's just like no, to like me... like if I'm watching, if I'm watching like anime or a movie or like whatever, and the character is like genuinely intended to be a blank slate, like I honestly just don't. I kind of uh, like I don't self insert. Like, um, I just guys, see them as a boring character. Yeah. Do you guys do you, you guys kind of know the whole thing with like um with like in in like Asian variety shows and sort of celebrity things, right? There is this sort of concept of like kind of celebrity couples, like fake celebrity couples kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like for instance in like voice yeah. actor stuff, right? It's like you have a kind of I Matsuko Shitsuku, right? It's like you know, like they're not going out, right? But it's like the the fan base is kind of shipped it together, and they've had these, like, you know, things and variety shows where they're just kind of like kind of acting upon that sort of meme, right? They're like, oh man, yeah, just, like, and like you know, tapping each other on the shoulders. Is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> aren't they? So, aren't they brother and sister though? What the, the, the Uchida family? Wait, you don't know, but yeah, you don't. Know, yeah, but still, that's a <laughs> fucking big meme because. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Anyway. Are you uh, saying that he's not really into his sister? Wow. (laughs) 
What? I mean, I'm not saying that. I'm saying they're not going out. <laughs> so, so I mean, as far as we know. What I want okay. to say, what I want to say is that it's kind of I kind I I've always treated like stuff like romances or stuff like you know the harem developments as kind of that. You know what I mean? Where I see them developing on the side, and I say, "Oh, that's a nice sort of." Flir- series of flirting or the dialogue that they have or whatever it is that's nice but yeah i've never uh, yeah I, i've never been like I've it would be like self like, that's myself. me like, yeah. that's, to me that sounds so like sad like yeah. to be no, watching I mean... a romance series and be like wow she loves me <laughs> bro like no i mean it's more of just like when you, I just feel like when you go too far to like make in in specifically like this harem series, this person a character, it just take it becomes less about like the it takes too much away from the interaction from like the female characters like perspective thing, in that right. sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it it takes too much of that and it just like puts it on the main character and I'm like I'm not here for the main character. I don't give right. a fuck about the main character. Right, right, right. Like it's not it's not what I'm in this series. I mean, I think I think you could be in it for the main character if the main character was good, but the main character wasn't. Well, I mean it also yeah. but I just feel like it's just like not gonna I mean, be in the that main sense it would be a should like, be good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just depends because like I'm just like I don't care that much in the sense of the harem, right? Mm-hmm. And it's well, not even like I mean, it, the it main character should I wouldn't still be good, it. right? Like, the main character still needs to be, like, have some sort of wit, right? Like, there needs to be something there for the female characters to bounce off of, right? The character can't be a literal fucking bore. If, if, if the MC was good, right, and had the quips and, you know, had the sort of orga- more organic interactions with the harem, like, oh, man, why are these girls all fucking jumping on me or whatever it is, right? Um, and was definitely more organic more engaging then would you be of the opinion of oh this harem is okay would you think that or would you just be like uh this mc is okay i guess kind of so it's like between like accepting the character and rejecting the device or saying okay well in this case the the device is okay i don't know because i i feel like it's like hard to say mm-hmm. I, it's it's difficult because even like even like what i'm saying doesn't fully capture like what i'm intending right <laughs> because it's like even even the mc in monster moose may like he had the quips and everything like that i just mean more so i guess it, it, it also falls under the idea of like what you were saying with i forget if it was your near but the more like episodic more inconsequential like oh, yeah, yeah sort of aspects of it that's more of like what i like Mm-hmm. with this i i don't want like say like what what really brings me out of well no it's not the only reason that would something that brings me out of sword art online but it's like the <laughs> fact that you have like the relationship then the harem but then you also have the fact that like there's this like fucking deep plot with kirito and like kirito is so fucking cool and shit like that but then you also have like this harem constantly i'm just like I don't really care for this like right, right, at exactly. all anymore, exactly. and like I would rather just not have the harem here at all. Right, right. You know, and if it's that. gonna be a harem, I'd rather have it be a much less series that's focused on like, you know, here's an MC, He's and then here's a harem. Be our world, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like more. The yeah, I guess it's like more need, of like the, char- the main character doesn't definitely need focus on the harem first, and yeah. then the MC is like. The t- basically make the MC a tool. Uh, yeah, the make MC, the harem a tool for the MC. The MC right. is literally right. only there to spice up the character interaction, right? Yeah, like yeah. the you know if you have okay, yeah exactly yeah if you have a like a character in a harem that's like I guess bullying the MC right. You don't want the MC to just be like, oh well, I guess I'm just getting bullied now, right? <laughs> yeah. You want the MC to push back against it because that makes it more interesting makes it a more dynamic character interaction right, right? like the, the, the character the main character doesn't need 
like or, or, serious or, introspection or some sort of deep backstory in order to facilitate that character interaction. Right. Or, or just a clever, a, some semblance of a personality. Right. Or, or a clever way in sort of, or not a clever, but sometimes seen like tool, for instance, is like, um, or the MC being used as a tool is, for instance, if in the case of you saying, for instance, if girl A is bullying the MC, right? The MC cries and runs off to girl B, who's like a more, on Onesan type or whatever, right? And then B and A have the, start having the discussion, right? And start interacting with each other, right? So facilitating those sorts of interactions in that way instead of being like, yeah, girl A is a bully. <laughs> Just ending it there. Right? Yeah. Like the, the MC is a vehicle mm-hmm. that the character interactions coast on. Right? right, right, right. Yeah, I definitely agree. Okay, and last but not least toast do you have a wish for future harem stuff i wish they i wish the i wish the author would know exactly what they're doing from day one i don't, I don't need them to backpedal halfway through the series and be like oh snap this girl is more popular maybe i'll make them the winner instead <laughs> Also, wait, the go- wait, the government say that about like any fucking genre to be on. Yeah, but I mean, we also said the whole thing. Or it's like, if you're starting a harem from the beginning with like a clear like, here's the single winner in the, in mind. It's like, why bother, dude? It's like, hey, wait a minute. The government's breathing down my neck while I'm writing this incest series. <laughs> Better not have the incest sent. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, also- but he did anyway. Yeah, that's true. He did. He also, yeah, also he's go a ahead. fucking rebel, dude. Yeah. <laughs> also, based sister fucker. <laughs> you want to go? Also, I need more interesting MCs. Kir- yeah, Kirito, mean, Kirito yeah. in a wheelchair is his is the strongest he's ever been. <laughs> <laughs> Literally and physically. Yeah, you're like usually you get like the shit where it's like the fucking harem girl in the wheelchair you want the mc in the wheelchair <laughs> I, I don't know i mean fucking professor x as the mc of the, harem. <laughs> the story was most the interesting X-Men when X-Men. kirito was not doing anything he just sitting there in the wheelchair then asuna and alice are doing everything and it's like wow they're actually more interesting characters now yeah they're spoon feeding him apple juice and you're like wow this is great. And then my favorite part was when well, my favorite scene was when the dude stole Kirito's uh, sword and he falls out of the wheelchair. And I was like, yeah, get him, Kirito. And Alice kicked their ass. I was like, yeah, good oh, job, man. Kirito. Also, <laughs> also, uh, to go along with that, the protagonist in uh, Princess Connect Redive, he's, he's also basically in a wheelchair. But he's also. I mean, the character. I don't know if he's in a wheelchair. I'd say the character. A, a metaphorical is wheelchair. A metaphorical yeah. Wheelchair, yes. You are correct. But yeah, he made all the he he made all the other girls shine and become more interesting that way. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, good job, nice. amnesiac. <laughs> but but if we can't have that, then uh, I don't know. Give me more Peter Grill. Okay. Well, on that note, again, thank you all for the uh, for participating with me in this round table. I I kind of did want to have maybe one more question, but again, we went on. We covered most of it as is, and we went on more than enough tangents for each question. So I want to kind of wrap it up here. Uh, I do want to finish up with a shout outs and call out section, though. Uh, the reason for this is mainly because we want something to vent. <laughs> uh, the news is one thing, but I think not having the shoutouts and callouts increases, builds up our rage meter too much. So I feel like we should uh, have that at least to roll it out. For those of you who don't know, each person here gets one shout out, one call out here. And a shout out can be any one person, place, or thing. You want to compliment, give five out of five, shout praises to the heavens. And call out is the exact opposite. Something 
that you want to insult, you give zero out of ten rage over, and it can be any one person, place, or thing from the previous weeks. So starting with that, I guess we'll go with toast. Uh, shout out to all. A shout out to uh, oh. hold on, let me uh, my my call out. I guess yes is to I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I, I guess my shout out is to uh, the, the the current situation. Sure. Oh no no my shout out. That's your <laughs> shout out. Oh my call yeah, out. It's great. <laughs> Everybody's dying. It's my sh- my call out is to uh, oh I remember now. Okay, my 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 call out is to uh, the, the Chinese. Or. Watch your words. Harboring that fugitive. I right? saw I saw Billy Billy Macro Link 2020. What did oh. you do to Suisei's model? What is that weird MMD? <laughs> I mean, I I, I kind of guess because they don't they don't have Hollow Live Studio Tech over there in China, but it's not bad. But you know what's really good? Suisei's actual 3D model. Okay. How how so. dare you ruin Suisei's fourth, fifth, fifth original song pieces, which is really good, by the way, with that janky model. Jerks. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So that was your uh, shout out. That was my call out. Yes, your shout out is. Uh. When when is it? My shout out is to Tokuyami Toa's 3D. Yeah. All right. It's, it's com- when, when is it? When is it? I think it's in like eight, nine hours. Maybe. All right. So check it out there if you're a fan of VTubers, I guess. Why wouldn't you be a fan of VTubers? <laughs> many, many reasons. Let me check. Six, mm. oh, six hours. Oh, damn. All right. That's... <laughs> I guess I gotta stay up for that. Also, side shout out to Ordinary Sausage. That guy's great. All right. And here, the shout out. New oh, England please. Clam Chowder Sausage. Masterpiece. <laughs> All right. Near. You want to um, <laughs> Yeah, sure. Uh, shout outs to um, the. Niagara Falls. What the fuck is it called? Uh, Fate Extra Record. Um, oh. Got announced. It is a remake, uh, apparently, of Feet Extra uh, that they're doing for the tenth anniversary. Um, oh, pretty pog. Uh, apparently, they were looking at uh, PC release. Um, the director said, you know, he wants to remake uh, Extra CCC as well, so, uh, which yeah. would be very cool. Uh, but he also as long said, as long as it's not censored, because we didn't. Yeah, yeah. He also said it's very lewd game. So he's not sure if they'll be able to do Heaven's it Hole. in the current uh, setting. Damn it! Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, they've like completely revamped the really <laughs> shitty combat system that Fate Extra had, uh, which is very nice. Uh, they also had a cool streamer, kind of way that was a VTuber. Yeah. Cool. Um, they they also changed Rin's outfit. Yeah, she's got more black. Pretty now. sweet. Yeah. Um. As for callouts, uh, I'll probably call out uh, myself. Um, I got back into Shadowers a while ago. Uh, Dear, please. Because I'm not a very smart person. And, Dear, please. Uh, you know, uh, the game makes me mad um, pretty often, but I still play it. Uh, it's cool. No expansion came out a while ago. Uh, it sucks, but you know. Near, we should just get into like a different card game together or some shit. I don't know, man. <laughs> hey, man, I was playing Rune Terra for a while. I mean, uh, that game's still fun, but. Shadow Rose has its grip on me, dude. <laughs> we should just fucking play um Magic or some shit. I don't know. Near, near, if you want a new card game, play. <sighs> Magic's for gay people, dude. Sorry. True. Sure. <laughs> near, near, you know what you should play? That's a card game. What? Data Life's Fair Pledge. 
please. I'm not gonna do that. But the but the closed open beta is soon. You don't you want in on this? Not particularly. Heffin, bro. But you get the Kurumi you get the Kurumi outfit because of all the people who pre pre what is it? Pre registered? Yeah, pre registered. I'm getting mine. Where's yours? Wow. Why wouldn't they give out a token out of it? Oh, I guess it's because Karumi's more popular than the main girl. That's, be <laughs> that's because yeah, that tokens and SS are rare, yeah. and I need to get I need to get all seven forms. Yeah, I'll make a team of it. A add me on your friend list later, Nier. I'll be sure to do that. All right. Anyways, uh, so that was your that was your shout out, right? No, that was my call out. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Fire, what's yours? Uh, so my... <sighs> what shout-out do I have? Oh, actually, my shout-out is to this recent uh, note-taking app I downloaded. Nerd. Called uh, Notion. And I I'm usually... if Some of you guys might know this, but I'm very... I'm, I take notes. I tend to take a lot of notes. I just write down shit on, you know, Google Docs, Notepad, uh, Notepad, TXT files, et cetera, all the time, just kind of stuff. And so I downloaded this for kicks, and I've more, I'm already addicted to writing stuff down on it. So <laughs> this guy's documenting his poops. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exact seconds. Um, Are you using these to document what VTubers to watch? I actually have a page on it that's like wow, it organizes. Nerd some of my YouTube video or some of the YouTube videos I have on Q2 sub. Speaking of YouTube videos, check out Spire's YouTube channel. He subs <laughs> VTubers. <laughs> Toast, please. Oh my god. Switch and TV to... Sl oh wait, uh, YouTube.com slash Spire yeah. Record channel. Yeah. yeah. Um, my call out is to... What is my call out? Uh, the thing is, I don't want to be... I don't. I can't think of a call out right now. Uh, let me switch it over to dark, and then I'll think of a call out while he's saying stuff. Is it your dark? Dark. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, I uh, thought was the same. No, go ahead. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to that Microsoft. Uh, that Microsoft showing. <sighs> like two days ago. <laughs> Yeah. So that shit was cool. We got to see Halo. Halo looking cool. Looking ha Halo cool. open world. Like, uh. Yeah. What's the other open world uh, game that was weird? Uh. ODST. At, uh, no, no, no. It was it? like the open world at night. Okay. What are you thinking of? What's the one that. What's the one with, uh. Sam Fisher in it as a cameo? It's a weird, uh. First oh, Ghost Recon Wildlands? Yeah. Is, isn't that also open world? Is that doing well? Yeah. No. Wildlands did well. Break. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Wildlands did well. Actually, I think there was a new Sam Fisher cameo in the new one as well. Probably. Another one. Um, I mean, that one's doing better. It's not doing very well. Uh, but yeah, the Microsoft showing is pretty cool. Uh, had a bunch of really good games. I don't know why people were so negative about a lot of it because it honestly just showed like cool game after pretty cool game. Uh, you ready it for? It also showed the new PSO2 update coming up next update year. Update slash new good. game apparently. Yeah, I don't know how that like works. Real... I, I mean, mean it, it just seems it's... like it just seems like a new game. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it seems it like this is like, what they wanted to do, it looks but they like had to change next so step much. For PSO2. It's like, hey, is this part? Of, was this part of the ten-year model? Oh, it kind of, kind of I mean, is. Twenty twelve, twenty twenty-two. Okay, yeah, I see it. I see it. I mean, this is probably to extend them beyond that, right? Yeah, it's because like, you know, now they have they do like an open world map, and now they're gonna probably have to do one yeah, for it, like it looks really the volcanic good. ruins or something, or like the ruins area, and, or or just add on to it and interconnect them and shit. It's like that'll be cool. Uh, the gameplay looks very fun. It has movement in it that like I really wanted in just base PSO two for a while. I'm assuming. I mean, the other reason why they did it this way was, you know. Because uh, 
Probably because PSO2's engine sucks cock. But it's the oh, same no, engine. Yeah, that, but but what I'm saying is like the, the reason why they did it like this is because obviously it's like you don't want people, you don't want to just shut the switch on PSO2 and just be like, all right, PSO2 done, PSO3 now. It's like you don't want people losing all of like their costumes and shit, right? Like if that carries over, now people they are still won't. invested. Like huh? the the only thing that they they said would carry over is basically your your character's appearance, your st- and their gear, not, and, not and, registered, their gear. I, and registered data, and yeah, the gear, the weapons do some of it though, do. all of it. It just changes the stats. All yeah. it said all of your all of registered data with your character, or including registered data, which includes hair, voice tickets, lobby action. Okay, if it's voice tickets, then I'm in base wear. Like, it should include base wear, and it should include everything. I mean, it's, since you can bring both avatars over, whatever is compatible with the new avatar is just able to be used, right? It just depends on whether or not the costumes are realistically, but I think they're going to be. Because especially, like, you're going... They have to know that if they didn't make the costumes compatible, you've just lost the Western player base completely. Because you're you lost the Japanese player base, too. lost a lot too. of JP player base. Well, well yeah. Because it's like you lost, but especially like the West, like you just killed your game immediately because after releasing it, because you just released your game and in under a year, you're releasing like a million different scratches for people to roll for. And then you're just going to make all of those costumes obsolete. So I don't think that, I I think that they're going to make it, uh, they're going to make the avatars compatible, but I think they have the option to switch back just because some of the stuff might look a little weird. With like the higher res characters and shit. Um, but yeah, I, I think the showing overall is really cool. I don't, um, I don't have a very good opinion of games that have a sequel, but also at the same time they release, they update the base game. Like, I see. I don't know if they're gonna update PSO two anymore after this comes out. They bet. I mean, they'll probably gonna, they're probably gonna wean off of updating it. Like they'll update yeah. it, but like eventually they're just gonna be like, yeah. Yeah, two more, not... two more years, basically. Well, because, well, be, yeah, because keep in mind, Toast, that they also did literally say in that, you know, oh, you can use, uh, you all like all your weapons and shit they carry over. The stats will probably be different, and like the stats will be different. The appearances will be the same, but you know, the the potentials might be different, and you're gonna have to get to a higher level to use higher level weapons. But also, if it's a class that can't like if that if the class that uses that weapon hasn't been released yet, you can't use that until you until that class is released in EGS or NGS. But I like so they're adding all of the classes that use the weapon. I mean, that's the thing, too, is like it would be pretty fucking stupid if the plan isn't to add all the successor classes like to that over time, too. Because it's like cool, you added Phantom, which is. People love Phantom, and people love Etoile. I don't know how many people really like Hero that much. It's like the least interesting of them. They got overshadowed. But now you're adding a... Huh? Hero got overshadowed really quick from to Phantom and Etoile. It's still yeah. good, but I mean, it's fan- not that yeah, good. Yeah, it's still good, but it's also like the least interesting, I feel, mechanically. But then it's like now you're introducing a fourth one that's probably going to be fun, and then you're like, but here's this new game that's not even going to have them in it. I doubt that. But anyway, we'll see. I think it looks cool. Remember um, Maple Story 2? the best way to do it. No, Maple Story 2 is nothing like that. Maple Story 2 is dead. <laughs> Remember when they said, hey, we're going to make a sequel to that game you love, Maple Story, Maple Story 2. Guess what? It died within a month. And they're like, yeah, oh, we're going to. Yeah, NGS isn't really a sequel, right? Like, not really. But we'll see. Oh, well, Maple I mean, Story I think. Is I also think. Wildly different. So. Yeah, I think what I think what NGS they're gonna do is they're just gonna be like, you know, here's like dynamic day night open maps exploration more, like more exploration. And that's it. I mean, for all we know, eventually they they will like on release it'll also have like the conventional PSO two, like, um emergency quests and shit where you queue up to those so we'll, we'll see 
It overall looks nice. 2021, um, baby. Which we're getting pretty close to at this point, believe it or not. Uh, we're closer wow. to it than not. Already half, nothing's year. happened. Yeah, half the year's gone, nothing's happened. Th yeah, thanks. I've pretty much slept through half the year, so that's very cool. Um, I guess my call out. Well, hard to say. I guess I'll go with the. No, I was gonna maybe circle back to what I was saying in the beginning, the very beginning of the podcast, like pre. Recording like pre show, which was um, now you know what? Fuck it, I'm calling out, I'm calling out Maul. I'm not gonna call out the anime YouTuber, I'm gonna call out, I'm gonna call out my anime list. My anime what? list has fucking, I mean, we all know the ratings are fucking stupid and bad, but it has decadence sitting at a 7.0. This is more of just like to get to a shout out. Decadence, oh, really cool, great decadence show. This is good. Everyone's is really good. I recommend everyone watch it. Uh, yeah, don't no look up the OP. <laughs> don't do not do not look up the OP until you watch the show. Right, right. Uh, you'd be a fool to do so. Um, and then just watch the show, man. Just check it out. Episode one and episode two, and then you're good. Then you know then you're good. Um, Dagon is fucking cool. It deserves a lot more than a 7.0. I think it's gonna be a really standout series. And I think it would have been a really standout series even if this year wasn't plagued. Uh, even if this we had a sea of shows this like year again. Yeah, no, for sure. I think this would have been a yeah. very standout series even yeah. amongst that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess my call out, because I, I finally did, I guess, scrounge up some ideas. I was going to call out my stomach because it's been really fucking big. Uh, yes, fat, fat fuck. Fat, yes, uh, but I, I've had like a chronically upset stomach for a couple of days now, which is very unfortunate. Uh, I don't know if it's a summer bug going around or whatever. What but, have you um, been eating, Spire? You've been eating poop. Yes, I've I've just been feeding myself the same stuff. Uh, I'm pooping out. You might have sepsis. Ah, uh, yes. Thanks, Toast. I'll check that out later. But um, my real call out goes to this one guy in a, in a Discord who was just like, um, I'm going to, I want to learn Japanese. And I'm going to do it by watching subtitled videos of J uh, JAVs or JVs, whatever you want to call them. And for those of you who don't know what that is, those are Japanese adult videos. <laughs> Which, what's there he watching? There are people that do that? This one well, what's, what's his genre? Like... What? What genre is he watching? Like sense. Time Stop? <laughs> you don't learn anything from watching Time Stop. <laughs> You don't learn anything from watching fucking porn to begin with. I don't know. Like, I didn't ask him about the genres, unfortunately. You should ask him. Do it. He, he came in and he's just like, "Yeah, I want to. I want to or learn." Is it the? Uh, is it the? Uh, or is it Invisible News Reporter? Because you that can learn a lot from that. Be, like that has to be a shit post, dude. <laughs> and and he's just like, "Can anybody recommend uh, some subtitle videos?" And everybody's just like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Um, so... I mean, I I know some, like yeah. the news reporter, the one you know, the one where they talk about the news. That's a lot of words you could learn from that. Well, uh... I don't know if you'd learn from like the basic ones though. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly what the learning method. I, mean, is I don't think like. you'd learn regardless. Like, you know what's <laughs> really known for natural dialogue is pornography. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, call outs to that guy. I think he should uh, probably probably give up. Yeah, just to... yeah, also, if your goal is sub, like, pornographic shit <laughs> in Japanese, just fucking watch hentai. Yeah. Uh, you can at like, least find that a lot I'm... easier sub. There's this, there's this one person, you know, you know um, that one time where, or I guess it's more than once, but the most recent time where Crunchyroll got blown up for 
you know, showing off their office while they're paying their uh, freaking translators nothing, right? Um, yeah, and even their changed, like, fucking... Yeah, it looks like a garage. <laughs> cafe it looked like shit anyway. Yeah, exactly. It was, like, tacky-ass fucking fake soccer trees and like yeah yeah exactly it, it dude, was like you couldn't even like, like, like <laughs> yeah it's like you spend so much money and you stupid fucks couldn't just like recreate a ramen shop yeah, exactly you or just absolute just fucking retards and just fucking lease an office building like just come on dark Can you dark. Guys, you know? <laughs> dark do you think but i mean people, if you want to make a cool like japanese themed like eating area and you're right. like hmm let's not make it like a natural street and like the Akiba Strip, or exactly like exactly. fucking exactly. just like a Japanese like storefront, or like a Japanese uh, ramen shop, or something mm -hmm. like that. That would probably cost a little less and be pretty simple to put together, and is a place you eat in right. front of as well. Let's just throw fucking soccer blossoms everywhere. Right, exactly. Dark, <laughs> and make you... it look like a fucking college cafeteria. <laughs> Dark. Do you really think that the people who sub anime like anime in general or Japan? For that, for that, the reason? people who sub, yes. The people who pay them to do that, no. No, that's there. There you go. Then they're like, well, I don't like anime. Why do I got to make this look like anime? I mean, <laughs> we I live in America. Think they, I think they think they like anime, right? <sighs> they they think they think they think that Japan ship is probably a lot more like anime than they realize. And then it's not at all like. <laughs> but uh, mm, I love sushi. I love Japan. Period. Yeah, they're literally uh, fucking soccer con like people. Yeah. Um. What what I, what I was going to say was that um, it reminds me of uh talking about the subtitles reminds me of the of one of the replies on Twitter that was just like, well, I sub uh, hentai and I can get through you know like five hours of hentai and like however many minutes or like however many tens of minutes and i was sitting there like yeah, yeah the, with its vast I'm, vocabulary yeah I, I was like but how much dialogue in these five hours of porn are you subbing <laughs> dude, <laughs> dude let me tell you something i can sub a fucking moan faster than like <laughs> do you do you, what you use talking about spire when you <laughs> sub when you sub do you use the how do, how do you spell the moans? A H N or A N with the little it tilde? It it depends on the moan in question, I would guess. Uh, <laughs> but, he uses U G H with a tilde. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, that's E U G H. E. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, <laughs> um, that's my call out, and I guess with that we are done. Near with... what? Oh. What about Nier? I he went. already did in the beginning. Yeah, I forgot, Nier, what was yours? I know, a shadow verse and something else. Oh, wait, Toast, did you do a call-out? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, he, he went, went first. first. Wait, what did, I, what did I call out? Can we? All right. Can, oh, can yeah, I, no, Spire I, was the one that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. I don't, yeah, Spire was the Literal dog memory in here. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. all right, Look, my do... shadows and call-outs were the only ones that were important anyway. Yeah, my, I forgot. My, I remember, oh, I remember now. Okay, we're good. All right, so let me wrap this up. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching us here, and obviously my faithful allies here in Near Dark and Toast. Thank you for joining me in another roundtable discussion again. The next time, the next couple of episodes uh, will be uh, actual reviews, actual review podcasts instead of roundtable podcasts. So we'll uh, be actually looking into the summer twenty twenty season series so look out for that we're going to be covering stuff like decadence peter uh, grill peter grill the, the giantess sprite the titan's bride or whatever the fuck it is I, wait uh, are we at <laughs> whatever man you can fucking have that shit yeah remember, yeah i i don't want to deal with the uh male arnold schwarzenegger preg <laughs> series uh, <laughs> anyways uh so we'll be reviewing uh stuff next time and we'll be doing a couple of those and then we'll try to transition to the next week and again gauge sort of how the anime season is doing then. But anyways, thank you for listening. And if you like what we do, we stream our 
podcast recording every other Saturday starting from 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over at for twitch.tv slash four play animcast. That's with a number four. Please check us out here during our live recording. Chat with us. You know, you know, we we often kind of take ideas from the chat and turn them into pretty productive discussions or just go off in a 30 minute tangent, whichever. You can check us out our recordings on our VODs here on our Twitch site as well as on YouTube, so you can pick whichever one you want to uh, enjoy. You can check us out on our updates and when we're streaming on our various social media platforms on Facebook and on Twitter, Facebook for Play Anime Cast, Twitter handle at 4 Cast. so check us out there as well. And yeah, with that, we'll see you next time.